and I appreciate you because I, I've been I've been following for a good uh probably a good three or four months. Okay. Because I was like, you know what I mean, and uh, I really en enjoy the content, especially uh, right. what you're doing. So it's educational. Keep it up. Keep it going, man. For real. And especially with uh, the transition on these things, uh, you know, it's a mutual find, man. I found right. you. You found me for real. We need right. we need more uh, programs like this. You know what I'm saying? Right. To get it out. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what my whole idea was. You know, uh, you know, I played D1 ball, tried out for the league, but okay. I grew up in Maryland, Prince George's County. You know. Mm -hmm. I was one of the wealthiest black neighborhoods and communities in the country, uh, yeah. and then I private school. And so you see all this wealth, but one one thing I realized is we're not getting the stories. Right, right. Uh, yeah. Like everything isn't just money, right? Mm -hmm. Like a lot of mm -hmm. stuff is just those little gems or having somebody that is a connect, you know, yes. in a corporation Absolutely. or somebody owns. You know, but that's the information that we're not receiving from our mouths to our next Absolutely. generation. And we haven't received it from the generations above us. So mm -hmm. my idea behind the whole athletes and cannabis for me to start off was, all right, cannabis is le being legalized. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Like, me being an intellectual person, eventually, <laughs> like, but all right, we live in the tech age. So mm -hmm. what did I do? I go and buy the domain name. Right, mm -hmm. athletesandcannabis.com, mm -hmm. and Smart. I can sit, I can sit on it. You know what I mean? Yeah, and, and like, wait. I'm, yeah, I'm building in that way because it's like it's digital real estate. Absolutely. I can keep it for three, four, five years, ten mm -hmm. years, however long, and it's a lot harder to kind of build a house and maintain a house. Right, where I could build a website and then mm -hmm. start to build and curate a community that way. Uh, where now we're getting content, emails, stories, and that that way, you know, five, 10 years from now, you know, we've built this ecosystem that, right. You know, all right, we want to, you know, but the tech is where it's at. It's this mm -hmm. computer, mm -hmm. it's this mm -hmm. conversation, yeah. like these conversations turn into books, turn into Absolutely. head talks. Um, yeah. But, you know, we are the athletes. We are the ones mm -hmm. that are training at the highest level, performing at the highest level, right, using right, cannabis, right. but being dead yeah. for using it, you know, and Absolutely. living three, four or five lives because we kind of. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, and the thing about it, too, the knowledge is there also, because, I mean, right. when, again, again, you know, early 2000s, I mean, it was like it wasn't for medication. Like nobody knew about CBD creams and right. shit like that. You know, right. you know how it goes. Like you're yeah. just smoking after work to calm down right. or after practice to calm down. He didn't care. Like, right. you know what I'm saying? All right. And now I think that you're hundred percent right. You're in the beginning of a point where this is gonna give it another year or two, especially because of the federal situation right. dropping. All right. Well, on hemp, you got hemp. You got hemp up the, yeah. I mean, hemp is like a now a dietary supplement, right? So right. like you can go to the grocery store and get like a hemp pizza nowadays, right? So, right. um, and that that is taken off as well also. And I mean, I even tested out um, the hemp when I remember I was playing, uh, like just last year I was in Montreal and they had this flag football league called FPF and it's actually legit. Like you right. would appreciate it being an athlete because it was a- um, We need more flag the, football. Yes, that's what I and, think. You know, yeah, the game is obviously. I'm a safety, so I like the hit. Yeah, but you would have loved. You would have loved this because people like they had um, about thirty divisions. And they put you in with a player rating. Okay, and then they also rate you as a player, like on some like video game stuff, like create a player. They had your stati They had statistics of everything from catches to tackles. Right. They had an all star game. They had like this is it was one of the biggest ones in North America. Okay. Like Montreal was known for that, like little gyms like that. Well, anyway, I remember playing it and and I remember like observing it for like six months and I was like, yo, I'm gonna I'm gonna go work out, I'm gonna get right, right. for this league, you know, because we all we both know too. That's also about preventing injury too, for right? Sure. Like simple stuff, like people always like, oh I'm no, I don't know why I'm so like, bro, you probably ain't worked out for this. And your body's not used to these movements and all these things, so you gotta get worked. Yeah. So <clears throat> I remember I was gonna sign up. I gave my girls, I gave myself a good six to eight months to train, right. and I was excited because now I'm fully into that cannabis mode, right? I'm fully into it, right? And so I uh, sat there, and one of my games, I ended up getting myself some Charlotte's Web, 
Okay. Uh, and it was like, you know, I think, you know, it's, it's like basically, no, mostly CBD actually. Mm -hmm. And it's actually a hemp. It's actually looked up as a dietary supplement. Okay. And so when it did, when I did that, um, I remember taking it before a game about an hour before, and no, because I had smoked. I'm like, you know, I'm gonna try this, and it was amazing. What how it balanced it made me, how I had the perfect energy and the focus, and it didn't feel like I smoked at all. Right. So it, it was a proof in the pudding, like, yeah, see, now even cannabis can be consumed even before you really do, you know, some athletic stuff like that. You know what I mean? So, well, and that's the whole thing too you know we we demonize it and it's like well cbd and you know how that's used and learning about the endocannabinoid system and learning that yes. everybody has that right yes so we already yes. have that in our body so now we are able to you think like we haven't been able to educate ourselves at all and then you mm -hmm. have doctors prescribing medicines but doctors we don't even know that doctors don't know anything exactly right? The exactly. doctors got their own little Google that they go to to perform yeah. different things. Um, and so my degree, I got a degree in healthcare. Uh, okay. And I think that's what really separated me, especially as a college athlete was, you know, you know um, and I think this is why we need to have these conversations too, is because a lot of times, yeah, we get these scholarships, uh, but kids are going to college and getting a degree in something that's not going to matriculate to anything. Uh, right into uh and that goes into a depression because if you go get a degree in sports rec management mm -hmm. but you live in a city that doesn't have recs around or community development or you know a place to actually work and hire you right you're not going to have a good job and now you have a degree your body's deteriorating you were a celebrity in college now you're just Absolutely. a hometown hero you got, yep. got out of the league didn't make whatever but yeah. now you got to be a normal person and nobody has taught you those soft skills you know those tangibles that you have um but these are the things that we have to you know kind of do on our own i realize because mm -hmm. it's like it's not gonna the system isn't built you know to connect with us in a certain way you yeah man you you preach it right now <laughs> you preach it right now because right. it's we, we i went through the same exact thing right um the skills that we learned one especially because you know, I'm an 80s baby, right? So we we came up on that time when one technology. I then, baby, 89. 89, yeah, yeah. Hey. <laughs> Yo, I'm, I'm not you, a man, 90s like, baby. I'm an 89. Yeah, 89. You just get you the last of the Mohicans, man. 80s babies are the last real ones because we grew up with that not that no technology, and we had to go right. get it. And, and I remember reading specific books and you, not Especially knowing the from sources. upstate. So we got to talk about upstate. upstate. Yeah, we'll talk about upstate. Yeah, wow. we're gonna talk about upstate. People don't know, man. Upstate is real. We're gonna talk about I mean, that. I mean, just just snow, the snow in general. Mm -hmm. right? Like people don't know. We you grew up tough, man. Snow was nothing to us. I, I mean, I literally was working out, you know, shoveling snow. Yeah, that's how it got down. You know, driveway, right. my driveway was pretty big, man. Right. I'll get out here, get out there. You know what time it is. You know what I mean? Well, and you, you had, know, I mean, you had a legit family too, and you came. Yeah, from, that's that's pretty impressive too. Your uh, your family background. So I'm a love. I to did. Hear. Yeah, yeah. I mean, to be able to be born into the Cottrell family, where you know, again, my uncle was um, he's the, um, Bill Cottrell, mm -hmm. and to be the first center black center of the Detroit Lions. And um, they both came from Delaware Valley College, actually. It was actually D3. Wow. So they came from D3. And this is a time back then, I think they had like 13 rounds in the in the draft, right? So but so he still got drafted like, I think one of these like eighth or ninth round. Um, right. They both came, they both were, because their brothers, they both came out. He came out a year before my dad did. So he went to Detroit and he ended up a great career there. And he ended up working for Ford. Detroit, right? Which so he showed how you can go from the football, you know, transition, transition to the corporate, yeah. And he ended up being. But the thing like, is, he had that like Ford. Yeah. And, you know, you don't have Ford everywhere. You don't have Detroit. Ford, like yeah, exactly. And he was in so, Detroit, and he was in Detroit. Right? Whereas so a lot of black the, people, a lot of yeah, black a lot power. of black people, absolutely. So he was in the mecca of it, and so he he able to finish his retirement being one of the high ranking people in the uh, in Ford. Actually, a, a fact was. Out here in Canada is a place called Oakville, which is south of Toronto. And they have a huge 
probably a 30, $40 million forward factory. Like this is provides jobs. Well, he, I remember him telling me that he was up here and signed last time he was here, he signed the papers to allow them oh, wow. to, to have the, so it was like a pillar yeah. like that. Right. Yeah. And then had my, said my father, you know, he played linebacker. Uh, he gets drafted again, Delaware, and he played, um, first black linebacker uh, for the Atlanta Falcons. He also played for like the Winnipeg, Winnipeg Blue Bombers and uh, okay. played a little CFL too, right? Um, and then his transition was into coaching. He went to okay. Rutgers University. Um, that was his first like D coordinator job. And then went to Kansas City, got his first pro job and in, in, with Mark Levy. I was actually born there, but I was only there for like maybe three months until he took the entire staff to Buffalo, New York. Okay. So... And then basically, like, you know, there's a couple of years in there where, like, uh, even before I went to Kansas City, I think I spent one couple of years in New Jersey for the QZ coach for the Jersey General. So it's kind of like I was a military baby for the first sure. couple, you, you know, years. That's but the then thing Buffalo, about being in the, in the yeah. industry of moving around, right? Mm -hmm. Like, Yeah. So then, like, you know. when I got to Buffalo, it was like, I, that was when I first, my first memory. But, the, yeah, uh, thank the heaven and above. Like, he wasn't one of those ones I was hopping around. My dad would have had me when he was younger. Right. I think that I would have been because like there's people don't understand that you in the pro industry, like, yeah, you can just be, you, you could be even good. You can be like have a set contract. And be right. like, Yo, bro, I think we're going to be here for 10 years. And they say, uh, no, we're going to trade you in two years. Right. So for now sure. you have kids, family, schools right. and all that. I remember, Friends. you know, having that situation. And then and then we end up going to Arizona for five years and went back to Buffalo. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Right. So I got kind of I got a West Coast vibe as I was a child. Then I came back to the to the home turf, which was Buffalo, and I remember realized when I when I got back, I'm like, yeah, this is actually me. This is where I'm from. Like right. I, I remember, like this is that this, energy this is that, that yeah. East Coast. Yeah, that's me. You know, Arizona was cool, but like, yeah, you know, I picked up what I needed to and got the hell out of there. <laughs> um, and that's what you realize though in these different regions and coasts, man. It really yes. is. It's different, yes. and you got to mm -hmm. go to kind of where you feel that connection. Absolutely, you know? absolutely, and um. So being that and then having him there and then growing up around sports all the time, that's what it was. I mean, from the very get go, I remember one of my favorite toys was like the, you know, those little basketball hoops that are plastic. Right. And playing, that's all I needed down the basement. I was getting tall, right? I'm six five. So I was getting tall. So I'm down there, duck, you know, playing right. and everything. I remember, I remember my dad beat me and I was like, probably like six years old and I was so angry at him. How it was the first time. How tall are you, bro? I'm six five, six, six five. Because yeah, the pictures brother. don't do you no justice, but I see <laughs> that you're tight end. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's the thing about it. It's funny. People are like, you know, you get to a certain level. You know about this, man. I'm playing in D1. You know, man, people, people big boys out there, man. Huge. Big, yeah. Oh, and my people don't get it. Like, like, when yeah. I first walked on campus, I was like, I don't know if I'm ready for this. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what happened to me Dude, when I was grown men too. Like, yeah, it was 23, 24, 25 kids. Look, man, like, I've been to jail, I, maybe. I had some confidence issues at one point in my size, right? Because I didn't really get, I was six, five and lean when I was like a senior in high school. So I got recruited by like D3 schools. But then there's a couple of D1 schools that were like, hey, man, they kept my, hey, my eye on me because I had real good stats. Yeah, I, had, I had like 14 sacks. I, had, I was playing tight end at, at uh, high schools. So I had 16 where'd touchdowns you, you play tight high end. At? This place called Williamsville South High School, which is outside of Buffalo. Okay. And that, yeah, upstate. You know what I'm saying? It's right outside of Buffalo. It's right. not far. We here's the thing. I'm gonna shout out to you because you because your fan from Rochester. They got great football out there too. Like and my dad was a beast. Yeah, I, I Rochester got stuff, good. But he was he was like a city all-star and all that. Mm. Yeah, shout out. I mean, he it's serious. I hope he sees this. It's Rochester, so I do it's serious football. Buffalo, we we were like neck and neck, but Rochester was that way. It was actually but even upstate. Rochester and Syracuse, you people don't get that serious football going right. on in upstate, man. Yeah. And so being going up in there, at that time, Buffalo was really weird because Buffalo wasn't UB, University of Buffalo, D1 was not recruiting local talent. They were trying to get all That's these cats from the South. Is. That's how Maryland. Yeah. Is. So they were getting cats from the South. Mm -hmm. Well, Buff State College, where I ended up going, which was D3, was getting all the local talent. And we was all crew because we all went to high school together and played right. against each other. So you're getting an all-star group of upstate, too. Right. Some Rochester cats, some downstate city cats. Right. So we was busting ass. Like, in the 90s, we were killing cats. Right. Like, people, one of the top D3 schools, 
besides like Mount Union and these cats and the, you know what I'm saying? Right. Like we was, and we would play, it's the funny thing about it, people don't get it, we were independent. So our first game, we playing D1AA scholarship teams right. and busting their ass. Busting their ass. Our yeah. game would be on ESPN, the score would be on ESPN. Right. So like, remember my sophomore year, I scored a win touchdown. They, they, it was a game they highlight, a D3 school, like D3 right. school, but they didn't understand that, yo, we were Players busting ass. Because, every level. Mm -hmm. but it's also if you play in that fun and that fluid which exactly friend, yeah so all you need is was, a few dogs right and we and we had dogs too we were all we were real like we were gang it was like you know i'm gonna tell you we had a full score years it was like we was gang it was it was right. like that because it was all races all frees mm -hmm. all people coming you know how football is it right. brings us together um and so going to that school and um, then I got my size and, and ended up. So then I remember when did you that's your when, when did your size come. So like it was like I was so because I knew my dad's a bigger guy. So I knew as my, I got my senior year. Now I started really working out too. obviously right. when I got to college. So I literally gained. I was when I got to, to college, I was like 210 pounds. By the end of my college career, I was about 250. So I gained about 20, 10 pounds, 15 pounds of muscle every year properly. But then the funny thing about it was the head coaches of UB, they were, they were, they weren't successful. I remember going to their UB camp and balling out. And right. a couple of coaches see me, and they were like, they had their eye on me, but they knew how they got down. Well, he got fired my sophomore year. And then like my junior year, when I started really going out, like we would connect with them. They had like a convention because I was captain, so I had to go talking. And it was like a, it was like a Buffalo sports uh convention and UB coaches were there, Buff State. Everybody was there. Right. And the, co the new coach was like, yo, what are you, are you from around here? I'm like, yeah, I'm, I went to school up, up the street from your school. Right. And he's like, cause he was seeing my size and my speed. He was just like, and I ended up being one of those guys that definitely should have went to D1. And, sure. and that's what we were talking about when you said earlier about how big the size is. Mm -hmm. The reason why I kind of also got deterred was my dad brought me to Rutgers one mm -hmm. day. Right. And I just never had seen anything that big. That right. university was already big. And then when I right. got to the locker room, and I'm like, yo, and I'm I'm 200 pounds, six right. five, and these cats, I like, I got a basketball body, right? These right. cats is like, you know how it is. These cats is. is like two three forty. That's they run as fast as hell. That's just an outside two hundred and seventy right. pound outside linebacker. You're like, what the fuck am I gonna do with this shit? Mm -hmm. But I didn't know right. that I was gonna, was gonna get so, and mature. Yeah, so then my junior year, I was like, y'all should have just walked on. Mm -hmm. Cause I had Virginia, I had like a couple of schools, like Youngstown State was was on there. University of Virginia was on it. They, right. they coached somehow in way, somehow, some way they coached. One of our defensive coaches came to our high school and just, and just was doing like a coaching clinic and he saw me. So I started getting, he started sending me shit, but I was scared. But I should, he's like, you should just walk on, bro, because you had right. that one year to train and then you're going to be a beast. Right. And, and, and I always high. think like, uh huh. And, and again, cannabis was not part of my situation at this time. Right. Cannabis yeah, I mean, was not I part of it. looking at like 16. See, that's the thing. Being in the NFL shit, weed was nothing. We so I was trained, like you don't like no drug test. They drug, you know what I'm saying? So I was away from me, like, so then, you know, even when I was touching it in any way, like sell, you know, whatever I do, have to sell it to survive, whatever, whatever. It was always I never I never touched it, never had one did it. puff. Right. Like right. I would be around cats, it would stink. You know what I mean? I'd be one of those guys like, yo, so we'll smoke that shit outside. Right. Like I was that dude. That dude, yeah. Get that away from Ew, me. right? <laughs> I look back, I said, I like, but I also think that I probably was immature to handle it at that time. Right. It might've like, put, you know what I mean? Got me in trouble. Yeah, for sure. You know I mean, saying? well, the thing is, you know, if you can't handle it, right? Like, so I smoked starting at like 16. Everybody telling me it's bad. I'm at private school though, and all my mm -hmm. white friends are smoking it, and all my black yeah. friends are smoking it. Yeah, exactly. Like, well, none of y'all play sports, but y'all all the straight A students, y'all all, all mm -hmm. the people that want to go to the smart Ivy League schools, but y'all smoking weed and and so I one time I smoked it at my one friend's house, and I'm like, yo, this joint don't make me feel. I feel great. Right. So then I smoked it again, and I smoked mm -hmm. it again. I was like, I feel <laughs> amazing. And then because sports was so big. I played in the WCAC, so we we're playing against the Damathas of the world, and so my body's already starting to hurt. Yeah. Also, yeah. about my junior year, so I'm like, yo, it really makes me feel good. 
Yeah. Uh, then obviously you got to play that devil's advocate where they weren't testing us in school. But once I got to college, you know, that's when they started drug testing you. And, mm. um, and so even in college, though, like we had a big track meet like all the upperclassmen, like our backup quarterback was like one of the biggest dealers on the team, like pounds on the table. Right. So I'm a, I'm a freshman. I'm wet behind the ears and it's 20 yeah. dudes in there and, it, and they rolling blunt after blunt after blunt. The next day mm. I get called by the trainer, like, yo, you got to come take a drug test. I'm like, oh, you know, but what am I thinking? Whole time I'm thinking, yo, they're going to think I'm not the black, I'm because I'm the clean cut black kid, private yeah, school. Yeah, I'm not yeah, supposed to make no yeah. mistakes. Right. You know, but as soon as you make that one mistake, what do they do? You are he a weed head, he a pothead, he yep. he this, he that, he that. Uh, you get suspended. Uh, you want ESPN and they say, why is he not playing? Oh, yeah. he broke team rules or he failed a drug test. Um, and so it's all those little things. But whole time they'll give you the, the Percocets. They'll give you the pain pills. They'll give you the shots. They'll give you all these different things. But, you know, the things that are, is truly helping us recover and be ready to play and perform at a good level uh, is, is illegal. You know, exactly. but then we don't we don't have a voice. We can't really speak to it because the people they locking up is us. Mm -hmm. And so yep. the weed that we get in is black market weed because exactly. it's not legalized and all these different Talk legal about it, yeah. bullshit. Mm -hmm. And so, mm -hmm. you know, it ties us up and we have no voice, no validation. And that's why I love what like all the smoke is doing with like Matt Barnes and Al Harrington with Viola. Absolutely. Um, you have to, you know, we have to build these organizations that give us a voice and a platform, you know, kind of like athletes and cannabis. And that's why I started yeah. because it's like, we can, we can have these conversations where this is real life, right? These are real stories, real experiences that tend to not be shared because we may not have anybody that created the platform. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Right. To, right. To give Cause I remember voice. like, and I remember you're hundred percent right with how the cannabis was. I remember surviving off of it. Like I remember my boy got some, my first brick that I seen was when I was like a freshman in college too. It was the same type of scenario. Right. College, clearly D3, they wasn't drug testing no fucking body. They couldn't even afford so right. people don't, afford. People don't, But people don't get it. Like when I came up, they wasn't even giving us gloves. Right. Yeah, and so we I, I mean, I went to OU. Like we really yeah. didn't that until we started winning. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. Which is fucked up because we out there paying for shit, paying for school already. And then, I mean, I remember being had having to like, my boy was was doing uh he did my boy who played ball he had graduated he was alumni he was doing security at Dick's Sporting Goods <laughs> right hustle <laughs> hustle so we was so he's like yo come in there and grab some Under Armour because we in Buffalo yo yo we, we yo we are half a mile away from Lake Erie right it's brick dog it's just snow is brick yeah it's going to hit like game four they not giving y'all no cold gear <laughs> they ain't giving a shit yo pads and helmets. And, and yeah, a shirt and a hoodie maybe or something. We out there like, you better, yeah. So we out there grinding for it. So I remember my one boy's like, yeah, fuck all this shit. You got the brick, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I remember butt busting it down, had all types of seeds and stems in it. But I'm thinking that people were all excited because it's just new, it's from Cali. And it was, it was through his frat bro, you know what I mean? Came through and it helped us all out, it helped me. Like had a good Christmas that year and I was able oh, to yeah. get, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Shit, so people don't get it like, but I never touched it then. Never was like I was, you know, away from it. So then I go to the NFL, right? And then at that time it was 05. And I remember my dad was a coach too, right? On the bikes. So your dad was a coach at the same time you're playing? The same time I'm playing. So like I actually came in because it was like Buff State. I didn't get drafted, right? So I knew it wasn't get drafted because the way the stats were, we I had a bad coach for like the last three, two years. All right. My first freshman coach was who was there now was Coach Boys, who was a legendary coach. I remember he he was like the perfect coach to me because he was he treated me like a man. Right. And he just wasn't well, didn't have to yell too much, just looked at you like you're because I wasn't a guy he had to yell at. You know how we right. are. Like right, you're right. a guy that, that ain't stubborn. No coach right. won't have to yell at you. Right. You but treat me it. like a human being, treat me like <laughs> exactly. Cause I remember I had like a man, like, like yeah, like I did some drunk shit, got you know, there's a thing. That's why I said I hate alcohol. Cause I remember I did some drunk shit, threw up, had to go get my stomach pumped, and the ambulance came to the fucking dorm and shit and had to get me out of there. So he heard about it. He's like, don't do that again, right? right. Like he's that a little quick little convo. You saw me one on one. That's all you need. Out. You knew you fucked yeah. up. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He's like, you know, I heard that's going on. You all right? He's like, you know, that's not gonna happen again, is it? And I was like, no. 
You know, and I remember just walked away like, yeah. And I remember I was never disappointed because he knew me. I never right. disappointed him ever again after that. Right. And then when he, so, and I had my best years when he was a coach. You know what I mean? And the next year he had a new coach and he opened it up and I had a good year that year, but it was still not the same, right? And right. then, so then my, my, my senior year, the stats were kind of low. So I knew it wasn't getting drafted, right? And mm, here we go again. I was, I was really sick. I got, I caught strep throat, I think like three weeks before I was supposed to go like to this all-star game, the senior bowl. Right. Right. And my dad linked it up. I was going to go to the right. senior bowl and play, right. but he was, but I was like 235. And he was like, nah, we ain't going to have him, have him out there looking like, you know what I mean? You don't want to look crazy. Mm -mm. That's why so I, I got, didn't do it. That's why I didn't do any uh, mm -hmm. all-star games. Cause yeah, my senior year, I played on two high sprained ankles. And so I was mm. like, I'm going to just recover and try to be yeah. a for a pro day and all that. Right. All right. Like, and, that, <laughs> and here's another thing, too. We didn't have any, like, combine training. Right. So when they get these tests, I wasn't really – I was testing good, but they didn't even know I could have been testing on some other shit. I was still running for like, my highest four, four, six, two. You know what I mean? Around right. 40s. Dude, you know, good high numbers, 225. Uh, Four, 15 times but when i look back on it now how i could have been and with, right. the, with how these guys with the knowledge and the oh, and, and oh, the, the training, training is yeah dog i could have you know easy four three easy four four because i was that fast I, I would i was that fast and i, was, right. I mean as far as the athlete i'll tell you why um yeah my boy is doing so, uh my boy who trained me he actually doing speed training right now specifically okay. in uh in san diego and mm. i think he trained at least four to five top five guys in this past pro day or this wow. past draft. I mean, he had Joe Burrows. He had, okay. Chase, I believe he had Chase Young for a little bit. Um, he had a couple dudes and I'm like, That's but he, he, he's breaking it down, you know, in terms yeah. of the speed, like, you know, he got a couple rugby players, USA rugby Olympic players, a couple track mm -hmm. people, um, but he literally breaking it down for like 10 yards. You yeah, know, he's breaking yeah. The mechanics down in that drive phase, and everything mm, to a science mm, where you know he is studying people and like all he doing is speed. He he don't focus yeah. on nothing else. Speed. Yeah, and, I, and I'm right. like, when I, yeah, because when, when I transition, yeah, because when I studied this, when I studied it, as far as like now, when I'm looking at it for the past, especially three years, I'm I'm I'm, I'm excited because I get. You know, I'm not jealous because I'm, I feel, you know, but I'm always like, you know, back in my head, I'm like, man, this right. knowledge back in our day would have been unbelievable because, you know, how they're training now with one, your health, right? Two, yeah, every movement is now getting broken down. You know what I mean? Every type of like, yeah, that 10 yard, that five yard of his football. Or, or, right. And now, if you look at it, even just like basketball specific drip like now your hand everybody handle right. it you know, handle how size you are yeah you can't just be like six nine you're in the post but then they did it you, you're going to do everything yeah right. you got, you got lebron cool you got kd player. exactly exactly <laughs> say seven footers right so lamello ball now right exactly and so incorporating all that you know does the when i was coming up we barely even had any of that knowledge so when i got to the league in the NFL, what happened was I got a call. You know, obviously, the bikes was like, "Yeah, we're gonna take you." And what it, what it was, even it was a two uh, two day like tryout. Mm -hmm. Literally, it was during a mini camp. Right. People don't notice, and it was from Buff State, so they were like, it was like not even official yet. I had to sign an insurance that's, waiver saying, "Well, that's the stuff that we don't talk about either." Yeah, like, yeah, you like you can make it to the league, get these little trials, but what yeah. happens in these trials? What's the exactly. problem that's going on in the tryout? Yeah, you know, I had to sign an insurance waiver saying if I got hurt, they wouldn't cover it. So then wasn't them some situation where I got in there and one day, boom, break my knee and right. I'm on the, I'm on Vikings IR, right? right? But also too though that plays into the bigger picture of like what's currently going on in the NFL. Right? Exactly. And why exactly. these guys don't do anything. Right. They, they, right. Really, they really muzzled because everybody knows that, man, I only got maybe three years. Yes. You know, absolutely. And, so, and they don't have the insurance coverage. They don't have the guaranteed contracts, but the NFL is America. Yeah. That's what it is. It, and I mean, I mean, they don't give a damn at, you, at the end of your you're, 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 you're still a number in a body. Like you could do all the what you want to, you treat it that it's a job, it's business. But, um, but and so like, 
I ended up like in that two days, two days, okay, going off, and they actually ended up cutting a guy who was there for like here we go, two right. three years. You made that guy, Back, and and he cut they cut him like you get out of here. We're gonna sign TJ, and that's how it happened. And then boom, right. it was like, you know, and so there we go again without having out. So then I remember first time I seen cat smoking. And yeah, we ain't gonna say no names. You nah, know, you, you don't have to. That. We're gonna keep it, yeah, it's, again, keep it gangster. Because <laughs> I've always like, I want this to go on platforms and then, you know, we don't, right. but like, because I know, like, like I'm talking like people who are on TV right now, we'll put right. it that way, right? That were smoking, right. Hall of Famers, chiefing, <laughs> chiefing. Um, and I remember like just drinking because I didn't, I can be around smoking if I had a buzz, right? So I'm drinking, right. you smoking, I'm cool. I ain't gonna hit it, I don't really want that shit. And then on top of that, I knew the drug test situation. I'm like, I'm, right. thinking, I'm always going piss clean. Plus my dad is on the fucking coach, coach I'm right. quite sure. Because yeah. they had, it was a two strike program. Like the first strike, you piss dirty, you get into a program, they don't put it in the media, but you know everybody know right. in that organization. It ain't no fucker. Right. So we know they keep so it bad, touch, but yeah. So I didn't touch that shit. Wasn't even in my head. But then again, here we go. So then, like the whole career happened, and then like, so again, I played. But then, uh, 04 was the year, and then 05 I, again, I came around and got allocated by NFL Europe, and that was a good year for me, right? Real good year. But so then, when I get to the training, that was the first time I had real training, mm. like real good, like D one up professional training. So my right. body was getting more. So in right. 05, when I had better knowledge, because then like I, like 04 got released and they signed me back mid season, said, okay, your future contract released back. Now I'm, I'm on it. Right. So I play and so I train even get right. NFL Europe doing well, have a, have a crazy event. Now even this is, this is a crazy story. I got, I have my face in titanium because I ended up having this huge like fight in NFL Europe. I got hit in the face with a bat. And I wasn't even a fighter. I was like the person who was getting everybody out the way. I was just da da da. So, but the well, thing in heaven, it was just like a six week situation. So the Vikings were on my side and they knew what happened. So nothing was like, it was all good. Right. So then I come back home early. This is like, well, the thing that's hilarious. I come back to like six weeks early because I trained whatever. And I ended up doing like a good summer of training, mm -hmm. real training again with Dog by camp. No one could say by 05, I'm the fastest tight end there and the strongest tight end there and the most athletic. It's not even it's right. not even an issue. They, they were scared of me. Right. Like it was competition. Rich, I, all these dudes were taller, six uh no. Right. I was six five, two fifty. I mean, benching, benching and, and, and overall being athlete, not just benching and squatting, but knowing that training and getting it was like it wasn't even that a training's game. different, yeah. That train and and then like running form, all that shit. Like I was they, like they had me. It was like and then they was even watching even trainers like yo TJ about to get some real shit. Right. So I made the squad and then fractured my ankle. Mm. And then it was like in, in practice too. So it was like a, a real bad injury too. Like it was right. facing the other way and everything. Again, here you go. They got pills all over the place, right? Pills all over the place. And I remember being almost caught up on oxycodone, like, because I was just popping the 500s. Right. And then next thing you know, I'm using it to go to sleep. And then next thing you know, you know, hey, you know, just popping them. And then I felt to start feeling weird every once in a while, so now I'll just stop. So I, was, I wasn't like, but they almost got me. It was pretty close to being like, let's start, let's, let's right, take right. it to get loopy. Right. So then, Again, with the with, with cannabis, it was never an issue. I never really, you know, it was always the get high shit. That, that's why I stayed away from it. Even though my Jamaican background, all that shit was there. You know, not everybody who's a, in a Caribbean you know, who's a, yeah, it smokes. Like, it's not even like that. It, you either choose it or you don't, right? Right. So then I got to um, a place in Marina Football in Rochester. That's why it's funny. Yeah, yeah. Rochester like Raiders. Yeah. At the end of the season, we are undefeated, whatever. I remember going through, we were going through some like real shit. Like it was like money, like money was low at that point. Like I played for a couple of years, but everybody know people on it, people know what it is. Just because you didn't end NFL, I mean, no, like you make tons of money and you handle it right. Like I was young, you know what I'm saying? Like I was well, and that's the thing, you making money so fast. Yeah. At, 
at a rate where you are, you have to spend it big. Like you got to mm. buy the nice house, a nice car, Absolutely. some jewelry. You got to have a trainer. You got to have a chef. Mm-hmm. You know, you're going out to eat. You tip yeah. the nice. Mm-hmm. You know, like there is all these different little metrics that yeah. you know, like you think as a young kid, like, like I, I tell people like as black kids, we think if we make a million dollars, we rich for the rest of our lives, not realizing. Absolutely. You made a million dollars, so now you got a million dollar lifestyle. Yeah. And so yeah, it's expectations now. But yeah, and everybody's piggybacking off of you. Right. But then you don't really have any true connections or relationships with anybody. So you buy in right. retail, but you don't have good credit. You ain't starting no businesses. You know what I mean? You're not hiring mm-hmm. nobody. You're not making no real, real money because yep. you get paid. Mm-hmm. If, if if you don't get a check at the end of your game, like you don't live, you can't pay your yeah. bills. Yeah, you know? yeah. So and it's an illusion that we've mm-hmm. been brainwashed into believing and thinking. And a lot of mm-hmm. our players are still brainwashed because they yes. think just because they're celebrities now that tomorrow mm-hmm. they will be the same. And I, like I tell even guys that's playing, I'm like, yo, you better squeeze it right now. Yeah. Because as yeah. soon as you're done, it's over. Yeah. Yeah, like, dude, those, those fans don't care about you anymore. They don't. They don't like that. You think because in the moment you think you're going to live forever. Right. Like the first time dressing 05 where like you got kids calling your name. Right. They know who you are. And if, and you really haven't even done much yet. But it's just those 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 right. fanatics, those ones. And then, right, you, right. and then you show up and then they talk about you in the news a couple of times like for me and shit. And then you right. then you get out there and you play and people cheering. You got 8000 people yelling, and, you know, you do some right. shit. And you think, and then you get comfortable, like, yeah, I, I, I'm old, this or something. Yeah, right. like. You don't I'm work a, hard for it. I mean, but, yeah. any, but in any profession, if you work that hard, as hard as we work for football, you are very successful. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Because you, like, you put in the work. That amount of work that we yeah. put in, whether it's through practice, training, um, the execution in, in games, to make it to that. Cause it's a lottery, right? It's mm-hmm. a lottery to say you're gonna make it division one, division two, whatever, mm-hmm. and then Absolutely. make it to the pros. So we know mm-hmm. that's a lottery that if I put that amount of energy into engineering, right? That amount of ener- energy into writing or being a journalist or being a media personality, whatever, a journalist, mm-hmm. you're gonna be exceptional. Absolutely. But whole time, our pot of black men are all fighting for the same positions. Mm-hmm. whether it be mm-hmm. football, basketball, rappers, actors. Yes. It's like, yo, the whole pot. Like, I know millionaires that, that'll that make a million off of this. Mm-hmm. Off of, yeah. Off of, you know, it's great, yeah. but it's like the, the, yeah. contain, the container of yeah. something, you know? Yeah, but, yeah. But, you know, we put all of our energy and effort into that, and then it, it molds who we are as men. Mm-hmm. You Absolutely. Know? And our community Absolutely. judges us based on it. White people yeah. judge us based on yeah. it. Because like it was like it was either the three when you walk around, especially me, being six five, right, and and big right. at that right. point. Who are you? You, you, you a hooper? Yeah, like, exactly. Yeah. You 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 can you you it's almost like you better be playing football because you just can be out here big for no right. reason, looking you're like waste, that. You look like you're a waste of size. Man. Waste of size. Yeah, all that size. I'd be making so much money. Right. And then I'm like, I don't know if you worked as hard as me, bro. I don't know if you did, if you dedicate. I don't know if you went out there and had that football, especially football mentality, where it's like we have, we especially in football, people don't get it. Every play could be your last. It ain't like it ain't like some basketball thing where you coming down, you just run up and down the block. And that, right. Nah, bro, like we got to go. Nah. We got to play line side you know, hit. <laughs> yeah, when you on that field, you are running like you are literally jumping. People don't get it. You are almost jumping off the cliff every play, and you don't care. You got a parachute, which is your helmet and your pads. So. Come on, let's go. Let's get a touchdown with this shit. Like I don't. It's and it's that over that, and over and over. Again. Yeah, it's that loose screw that we have <laughs> to play football. People don't get it, that that All we right. channel it in. So when you get hurt, you start to kind of slow. You know, every once in a while, after what getting hurt over and over again, and right. you're like, okay, hold on, motherfucker. Right. Like now, you know. know. So I remember playing arena and um having the first. You know, at the end of the season, smoking just just some trash weed, you know, streets from my chest right there off the west side, shit. Dirt. Getting high, yeah, and it was just like it felt like oh, you know, getting the dude high. And so you went through that that high stage, and then I went to the UFL, where at this point, about a year and a half later, I had you know went to Canada, 
know what I'm saying, from Buffalo, like Frost and smoke some good air there. So I was kind of know I'm knowing now I'm knowing new, a couple new strains. Right. I'm knowing what you know. We I still don't know the, the, what to this, look for and shit. Exactly. But that's the thing too is education, right? We still yes. have to educate. We can't just smoke and be like, yo, I'm just smoking. I'm just smoking. You know, yeah, I'm just smoking. getting high. Yeah. What are we smoking? And, like, right. What, what mm-hmm. are the contents? You yeah. Know, how was this? And all grow, this was. Right? Yeah, and it was like all this was evolving, right? And so then. Basically, you know, at that same time after UFL got I had another, I had told my meniscus, I had another knee scope, and I bounced back from that. And after the that year, I was like, all right, I know this is it. Like, every once in a while, I get that itch. Right. But I'm like, I don't feel like getting hurt again. Right. And I knew when I had that feeling that it's time to like, you know, all right, let's focus on the next chapter. I never had had a problem getting a job. I never had a problem. Again, I played ABA basketball, so I never had a problem. Right. Give that to it. Work. Now then with the cannabis situation, now I'm now I'm incorporating it, but I still want to keep in shape. Right. We're playing rec shit, whatever. Now I'm starting to incorporate it and getting the knowledge of what it actually does. Right. So then especially when I started getting to the new strains, I say about two 2016, mm-hmm. 2017. And that was also when I was starting became fully roster fry right and doing everything that I was doing and all the knowledge of the cannabis. So now we're talking about what I like naturally growing, you right. know, now I'm in the street, you know, we, me and my boy were growing shit like here, there, here and there. Yeah. I saw you and got then, your own little brand. You got your brand too, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah. The BSRC, right. It's going to be good. We're going to have our own like real grow. I appreciate it. Yeah. And now I'm getting to that point and I get mad because I'm like, yo, how this benefits right. is a crime that when people are hurt when people are sore to not have, you know, CBD creams, live resin creams, uh, ingesting CBD, using it because now it's, I mean, on your joints. I mean, because what we went edibles, through, gummies, out of all that shit to go to sleep, especially. I mean, days before the game, to the be anxiety, able to, you know, anxiety, you know, yeah, that, yeah, that anxiety to be able to night before the game take a little thirty or fifty milligram, you know, gummy, where the fuck, to make right. sure that yeah, you always gonna be able to sleep and then. By the time you wake up by game time, you're good by like 7 a.m. You're not gonna have that droggy shit. So get a good strain and da da da. da. And right. then maybe even the boat, and maybe these dudes can like like us can be, be like you know, five, four hours before the game. Yeah, you know, I'm gonna smoke a, a fucking good sativa that's right. light and then have a CBD, let's say a pure extract dab, which right. I which, which clears you right up. And then you go out there and you know what I'm saying? And you're right. not even affected. Right. And we know, oh. we know what it feels. But because it was—that's why we need our own leagues, bro. Exactly. They because that shit it. should be. You know I mean? Yeah, they couldn't handle that shit. Yeah. That that they would see, the injury rates go down. They would see right. how it, you know. Because when I even work out, incorporating now with the workout. Now, basically, my thing is when I work out and do all that stuff, I don't. I smoke maybe light before my workout, but even sometimes if I'm doing the morning, I don't have to. Right. right. But afterward. It's it's my body needs it. It's like right. well, it's and that then, recovery, and yeah. It's that recovery. It's, it's part of that recovery, recovery. yeah. Right. And there's well, your no body, way. You got to rebuild the muscle, absolutely, you know, that you just destroyed. And so sitting down, exactly. you yeah. know, the cannabis goes in and does its magic. Mm-hmm. Exactly, exactly. And that's the it's it ain't no it's not a drug. It's it's a herb, and the fucked up well, part you know, about it's all, it. Again, it's all illusion and wordplay. Yeah. So yeah. you, you we see, just crazy you know, wordplay. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. But, you know, that's why we got to get involved in politics and, and speaking and using our platform mm-hmm. and our voices. Because if you could have one man say, you know, you Jerry or what Anslinger or whatever his name is, and somebody like that be in such a powerful position that they could mm-hmm. sway, you know, the the opinion that everybody just assumes that we gonna put weed with criminal and demonized and is it's like yeah, like. It's mm. definitely criminal, you know? And then yeah. we saying like white people smoking it the same amount as black people are, but you know, we can't just be out here smoking it and la di da di da. Yeah. You know, we I don't mean, <laughs> yeah, these, I mean, these people were not only smoking, but like they can smoke it and then get involved in business. Right. Oh, they, they, and, they, and, they and own, be they completely, own yeah, and can be completely at the top Growing of the whole it. type of situation. And meanwhile, knowing that you got people that are black completely one weed, like literally, no pun intended, weed the fuck out. Right. And 
not even able to get to because like i always look at the situation like man if that was a black company ain't no way they'd be able to get away with that shit you know and it's just it'd be refreshing to see like you know companies like that had like al harrington and some of the ones down in cali that are black owned right. and, and getting involved but it was almost like i saw them it was just like they made sure that it was a little bit too late Right. Like you had to well, get they, you even the it. reason they could get involved is because they have extreme amounts of liquid capital. Exactly. Like, so like somebody like, like Jay Z just yeah, Jay-Z yeah, Jay Z just got involved. Look at his yeah, Jay Z got involved. Yeah, he could get involved. He had a one billion dollar you know situation. Al Harrington, yeah, huge capital. You know what I mean? Right. Not only him, but you probably you know he he put together a couple more other investors that he probably oh, he got knows. some people to get together. Yeah, exactly. He did it. So, he did it great, but it mm-hmm. took that. For him to you and he's using his platform well but mm. it's like how many more guys can do that and mm. then like how many black people aren't in the spotlight like that that do have money mm. that don't like weed or to mm. completely against it mm. but it's like yo like when you look at the the cannabis plant as an industry you're talking about industrial uses absolutely so Absolutely. yeah, you could you could be against the weed and being high all you want to, but you're talking about food. Yeah. You're talking about oil. You're talking mm-hmm. about agriculture, mm-hmm. cleaning the air, purifying the soil. You're Absolutely. talking about clothes. Mm-hmm. You're talking mm-hmm. about straw. You're talking about so many different things that you have to be yeah. a visionary to see. But guess what? It's legal now. Yes. And so yes. hemp is cannabis, mm-hmm. but hemp is regulated through the USDA. Right, which is com- completely different. I'm in Ohio, mm-hmm. so the USDA hemp program is completely different than the medical marijuana program. Right. Okay. So, right. Right. and but, and then that here and then breaking it down state to state, the reason why in the states is that you're gonna there, it's these drugs are that people have are already legalized on that national level. So every state is involved in that, right? So then when you get to like, okay, this state has that, that's the same, those, your, those, your situation, it ain't the same that it was in Texas. Right. Or ain't the same how it is in even New York state. You know, right. they're still not even, because of the city, you know, we can, upstate could easily handle a, an amazing cannabis program. Sure. It wouldn't yeah. be an issue. Right. They're worried about, they legalize that shit down the city. You know what I'm saying? With all these birth, like it's going to be the corruption. And it's really like, no, nah, but you don't understand is if you just legalize it the correct way, which is allow people to have their storefronts, allow people to do this, you know, the crap. Allow people to grow their own plants. Grow their own plants. And then they just have the proper storefronts. Right. That's what you need to add. I mean, I mean, there's places like even like California that are pretty good, but they're suffering because of now the government's like, yeah, you're going to do that. But these are the taxes that you're going to pay. Right. And people are like, still, now they got to jack up the price on the herb, even, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, they fight out there like it's okay, but we got to, we got to jack up That's the price. The, thing you can't, uh, the problem is you can't control a plant. No. Talk about it. So if I could take a million seeds and throw mm-hmm. them out, how you going to tax that and tell me what, that, what I could do with it, what I can't do with it, how I can utilize it? Like it's impossible, you know, but that's what we're continuously trying to do. And it's like, yo, like if I got a couple of plants over here, like that should be allowed. Like the uh, there's a guy that I know that's a pretty good grower out here. And so he utilized the caregiver um, clause in the law, which mm-hmm. basically states that if you're a caregiver, you can grow plants for your patients. Mm-hmm. Um, it's kind of like the California law, I believe, uh, where you can have up to like six plants per patient or something. And so okay. he, was, he was utilizing that because there's no way where in the Ohio law that says you can't do it. But he mm. got raided just on principle, basically. They basically just trying to scare him. But when you look at the laws of the reality, like a lot of these laws are flawed because it's new laws. You know right. I mean? So it's absolutely you know, because it's, know, it's part of the law. Mm-hmm. And, and it's almost to the it's that that older generation that is still having that influence right. when you're in politics they're in they're in office right yeah they're so the ones 60, in power, 70, yeah. yeah 56 50, late 50 60 70 so when Eight, were they born there's some Boom. people in their 80s 80s yeah yeah you're right but so they they don't they don't really have the the knowledge still they, they still think it's like okay you're just gonna get this and then you talk to them like okay y'all want to get higher we'll allow well, they don't even understand no, 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 no. 
Yeah. Oh. Mm -mm. <laughs> Mm -hmm. like, we got social media these days where yeah. people are getting more access to information where it's like, yo, we're not stupid anymore. Right? Yeah, you can't hide the truth. You can't hide, you the, can't hide the benefits. Like, of like oh, black yeah. people ain't being murdered by the cops. Well, here in Columbus, no. they just murdered another black man just the other day. Mm. So it's mm -hmm. happening every day, you know what I mean? Mm. And we're seeing it in the information. And so it's like, well, America was founded on those principles. So how do you think, how, 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 what, what we think it was, you know, but we continue yeah. to, you know, capitalism, right? You still got to keep moving around. Everybody's still right. Working. Everybody's and still they, working. Yeah. Like, and, they, and I mean, to me, like we said, the cannabis plant, until it is treated, like I said, until it's treated like basil. Right. <laughs> where you can go to the fucking grocery store. Right. And pick up clones. Right. That That's when you know. When you have a, when you fucking realize that instead of having these open fields with nothing going on them, because you mow it down, you plant a hemp, you plant some hemp in there, right? And making the air clean, paper, paper. I mean, I mean clothes. About you can build a house with hemp, and it's, it's stronger and more biodegradable. Like right. it's, 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 you can't oh, hide this shit. So they're just like you could tell they're just kind of compressing it, like keeping it down, like you right. can't and you can't. Right. Like dog, yeah, man, what are you talking about? You can't hide it anymore. You know, and I, I, I and well, I'm in now people in other states using it, and like I'm in Ohio, like yo, this is crazy, like. Mm -hmm. But if I could go to Detroit, I could go to buy some recreational, like yeah, like but and that, and that determines economies, right? People decide, hey, I'm gonna move, and live someplace where it's legal. Absolutely, especially if think, I need I mean, it for medical purposes. Yeah, right? it um, in New York State, I'll tell you the story of this they allowed medical, but to get medical, it took, you want to talk about race? They were fighting in Albany, uh, trying to get it, to get shut down. Well, all of a sudden a lady spoke up and was like, cause what was happening, you're so right about the move. People were going to Colorado. Right. Oh yeah. So she believed in a tincture from her, from her kid and wanted to give the proper medicine. So right. she was fighting it for a year or two. Well, the boat was late and all these things, the child passed away, rest in peace. Mm -hmm. So then the white man, woman literally, and the mother stood up and right. ended up within about two and a half months, they legislated medical. Oh yeah, People she don't went get hard. This shit. Yeah, she but went she hard. Went, she went to politics. She went to politics. You know, she so probably, she, probably, she probably eat, slept and shit. Yeah. That and she cough. even like and, and, and she wasn't even like happy about it. She's like, yeah, thank you, but it's a little bit too fucking late. Right. And I appreciate her doing that. She was right. like, yeah, I, no, she was like, yeah, okay, but you're late. Like, you think this is what it is? Like, I could you could have just did this years ago how it's supposed to be. Um, so then it got changed to where now they have, they have small little medical things where you get like a small, like it's little, little small oils. Like it's nothing, you can't get no damn flour, what the fuck so ever in New York State. It's still, you know, and Governor Gummo, he's sitting there, he's, 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 he's not gonna do it. You no. can just tell. You can be Democrat all you fucking want to. You can come with the fuckers and he's just not gonna do it. Yeah. That's the business situation. That's why right. I hate about it. Right. It's not because of it's healthy. They all know it. Well, because they getting paid. They getting paid from pharmaceutical companies. Yes. And yeah. The, the, and the uh, the big healthcare companies. Mm -hmm. That's why. That's why the, the 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 rates are going up because they're getting paid. Absolutely. You know. They're getting paid a lot, and they're getting paid a lot of money. They're getting paid. They're, 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 they're getting paid. They're getting, industry, that's the that's where all the money at. Yeah, I mean, you're talking trillions, not billions, trillions. So, and it came with cannabis it's such a self-sufficient thing where you can have a corner in your house and grow four or five plants. And if you're not that consumer that, you know, goes hard, like car super, super hard, like most of us, you know what I'm saying, right. whatever, you can have off that yield, a good, you know, two and a half peas, pounds, right. that breaks over some, some people can make that last for almost eight months. So you're looking right. at this while like, oh my God, these people can grow this medicine in their own house or, and then don't let them get property. Right. And, they, and, and it. yeah, they'll, <laughs> yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll never, friends. they'll, they'll never buy anything ever again. They'll be just local, little small you'll dispensaries. Never, you'll, never, you'll never buy another pill. You'll, yeah. Another because pill. when I got never to the cannabis, doctor, probably because <laughs> when I got to the cannabis, the last time I've taken anything, 
was an antibiotic, I think in 2000, I want to say 15, that was when I was doing music and I caught a little bit of a, a throat bug because mm -hmm. uh, I had to take the Greyhound bus down right. to Virginia. Mm -hmm. And I, and I remember just being on this girl's coffin and I remember I just, I wasn't sick at the time, but I remember after like two weeks, I just I couldn't kick it. And I remember right. like eight weeks, I just, every time I smoked, I had a little bit of, just a little cough. I wasn't right, right, right. sick or nothing. Yeah, you're real right. sick or nothing. But I remember I just, I remember my one boy was like, yo, I got too many bottles, just take that, clear all, it clears all the shit out. Just right. whatever it is in there. And I remember I took it. And I remember again, a whole week process because it clears everything out. People don't get that. Right. So you got to replenish your shit. So I was kind of, I was knowing this since I was totally getting into the health. So then that was the last time I ever took something that was like a medical. Everything mm -hmm. else has been a bad air ailments, cannabis and tea, cannabis, right, right, and, tea, right. cannabis herb and, and, and whatever I need to ingest, right. fruits, whatever. Oh, even detox. food, man, like our, yeah. our lack of education of understanding mm -hmm. what real food is like, even in the, you know, going to the grocery store, you know, you got people yes. eating food that's not even real food. Like, yo, I mean, and fruit. <laughs> I remember when I remember when I was playing too, right? This is why you were talking about money earlier. The knowledge wasn't there. I had my, I had a spot, right? Two bedroom, fly apartment, nice kitchen in there. But guess what? You know, playing sports. This is the thing too. The knowledge, you funny. They would get, they gave us a little bit of a health book, right? Like during the in the playbook situation, right? <laughs> And there was, you know, it was all about meats and shit. Now, mind you, too, it's I'm all about meat. Vegan. Them protein. Vegan. I'm yeah, right. I'm vegan, right? So I'm like, yeah, protein, protein, chicken breast, you know, skin, steak, like all this shit. And then they even recommended the fast food. They like, if you're gonna go fast food, do Wendy's because at the time Wendy's was still people don't get it in '05. They were still kind of like a craft fast food. So. Wendy's is actually founded in Columbus, Ohio. Okay. Like I, I literally live right next door to like their headquarters. It's crazy. Funny is that funny is my roommate in Buffalo, uh, New York, mm -hmm. his family's from Columbus, his mom, oh, yeah. and, he, and he's like an entrepreneur, real special people kind of Columbus. Shout out to Columbus. Ohio. Yeah, Columbus is a special place. They they different special out place. here, but it's a lot different of money. It's a lot of yeah, money. a lot of money. A lot of bosses come from Columbus, Ohio. Yeah. Man. Um, but um, they say if you build a business in Columbus, if it's able to work in Columbus, it pretty much can't go anywhere. In the yeah, it can go anywhere. He came from there. He bought a model too, Buffalo, New York. He's been one of the best barber shops in Buffalo, oh. New York, real quick too, like right. six months. You know what I'm saying? I remember he was he, he saw me too. He saw how I smoked. He's like, yeah, I never seen anybody smoke in my life. And now this is when I was like 2008, like 2015, 16. Really good. He he saw me getting involved into the roster, right? So he saw okay. me. I was just like. Right. Chief. Ninth floor. I had a beautiful, it was a beautiful spot, big windows. So I'm out right. there just, you know, and then in the whole building, everybody smoked. It was cool. Right. Um, but but like getting back to that the, that food in 2005, like they recommended Wendy's, right? So Wendy's was like, because it wasn't really fast. Wendy's, remember at that time, Wendy's would take it would take like five minutes to make the food. Right. Shit, yeah, so. they they had the fresh um, burgers. And then Friday, when we had practice. They would cater food. It was always some shit like famous days or whatever. So some barbecue, whatever kind of you know recommended. You know, it was never anything that was good. And then I remember nights before game Saturday. I know this has changed now. Right, this is right. people don't understand. I know this has changed completely. It changes now. fast too, though. Yeah, yeah. They had like five they had good years. Food. Yeah, they had good food. But remember, they had to the, remember that pasta shit. That that, that pasta. You know, everyone like thinks pasta before, night before game carbs for energy and that wasn't it at all right that, that's that's not that is so not true none of that shit. yeah you didn't need none of it and so i remember me cats drinking you know i know i knew cats that was like i played better on a hangover go ahead i mean yeah dog like i knew cats that was like we going to room at like 10 o'clock we got we, listen yo like they got curfew they coming to get us at like 11. Yo, they in the room get to it <laughs> Like a whole bottle of Henny to the face. Lit. I got him. And then the next day, you look at them and they, they kind of, what? You know, what? I can't say no day. Pick two picks. You know what I mean? You know, you know like how I go two picks, nine right. tackles, one for loss. Right. It, special teams, even play. You're like, die. Right. You look on the field like this motherfucker. Right. Just hammered. But right. then I remember even, but the funny thing about it, I remember almost experiencing the same thing. So I remember I was in the NFL Europe one time and it was my birthday. And no, we playing during uh, during May, so NFL Europe at the time was during you know off season. So this is another thing too. So I was playing two seasons. We gonna get a two football seasons in one That's year. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Man. 
Yeah, you definitely. So at a high level in NFL Europe, right. was, at that time we had players over there. Like they were oh, sitting everybody who was on the list. variability of like you know it's a small percentage of guys in the league. Yeah, There's a lot of guys that are athletic and physical and but it's only so many spots. Yeah, people don't so get good. that shit. Man. It was tough. Yeah. And then I remember like, like, so 07. Yeah, I forgot. Oh my like, yo. So like, yeah, I forgot what I was gonna say. Cause I thought y'all got holy shit, because it, it, it was so 07 was such that 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 NFL Europe situation. Yeah, so I'm sorry. You got it. The food. The food, yeah. So like like 07, good year, play two seasons, and then like I'm eating right. I'm eating like by the time I get in 07, I'm eating like out. Right. Like wildfire, like All right. food, tons of steak, tons All of right. shit. So then like, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It was during May. Now I got it. <laughs> it was during May. So it was during my birthday. My fault, y'all. It was during my birthday. Bring it right back. Yeah, like, hey, fucking bro. It was, it was smoke is good. Okay. God damn it. Lost we, got, it. Wait, we got you. We here, my yeah, brother. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> this is, this is open yeah. Session. Open yeah, session. This is, it, this is not a, a panel discussion. Yeah, exactly, yo. Straight up. So so it was during my birthday. That's what it was. So we had like 48 hours before my game, but we were still, they still allowed us to go out. It was a spot right. called Black Sound in Germany. It was popping. It was all, it was like actually Germany, in Germany or Frankfurt. Yeah, I it was in Germany Frankfurt. I was 15. That changed mm-hmm. my life. It yeah, it was life. in Frankfurt, Germany, and it was on a, it was this place called Hanau, which it was right on the base. It was off the base with the base. So we so right. the dog, I went in there. I remember it was but I saw my nigga from Buffalo. Right. Boy, all Rico, all like, it was all like all amazing. All yeah, all it all was all like you was in the club. I'm like, yo, because right, I didn't know he was there. Right. And he knew and he he knew I played, mm. but he knew I was on Frankfurt. He was like, yo, you here? Like it was a, it was amazing. Like I remember right. like all I lost these pictures. It was, it was like we be. grew up together. Like right. we grew up together. Like, he knew me. Like I'm talking about East Side Church, played a church league 13. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Like crazy. Yeah. And so my birthday, we get we get lit. Like it's just like we were I was drinking. We wasn't part of it. There was people those small contingent of because they didn't test us over there, but most of us were alligated. Okay. Right. So they didn't test us over there. All right. So the one guys who didn't, so guys who didn't weren't alligated, they kind of were smoking, but the guys who were alligated, I'm I'm part of San Diego Chargers property. I can't be smoking. They test me. Matter All of right. fact, dog, when I got signed, it was I was like, this is why this is why I stay away from me too. When I got signed. I was in Minnesota at the time. So they sent me the contract. When I signed that shit, I got a knock on the door the next morning test. at 7 30 in the morning. Drug test. That's it's like I was nice. The guy would he had called me. He's like, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm here to, you know, right there. And he, and he had to come in my apartment and oh, witness yeah. me so fast forward. So then boom, I wasn't, I mean, NFL, you're ain't no way I'm smoking nothing. So we drinking right. and getting lit. Boom, I have a nice night. Boom. So then I go to practice the next day. And I have the best practice I have in my life. Like it was the most craziest shit I ever seen. It was just like, and I, and, cause it was just adrenaline taking over, right. but I never, so but I, so I kind of understood. So at that time I said, yes, I could get it. Like why wow, these dudes are doing it, but I wasn't doing it. I'm like, that was painful. Right. Like I don't know, right. for whatever reason I was catching right. everything. I was beat, I was cooking out there, like, you know, right. whatever. So then fast forward to when I'm in the bikes and there was nights I catch, you know, we in there, I'm not going to sip nothing, whatever. Actually, no, I might have like one little sip or something, right. whatever. Like a shot of a hitty, but then it wasn't. These guys is like cupped up, like right. yeah, you know. I, mean, I gotta get this four eleven, yeah. And then what it should be now is cats should literally be able to smoke. Because when I went to the UFL, well, that's the thing. You, I knew dudes that would smoke before the game or like yeah, night before the game, and you always knew that, right? Like yeah, especially like even in college, like dudes are smoking the, the night before the game, right before yeah. finding a way to get them to smoke, and they yeah. all in out. Right. But the whole time, like, I'd be nervous. Like, nah, not mm-hmm. me. Not me, not right? Me. And especially how the NFL is, like, especially if I played now. That's the fucked up part about it. If I played now, I wouldn't smoke. You can't. You, you know how Steve A. Smith says, stay off the weed. And people are like, yo, you don't know. And they, they hit him with all the facts. But I agree with him because you got to get this gotcha. money first. You got to get the money. I mean, so you got to lock there. it in. Like, so, so yeah. So if I'm out there, I'm like, yo, I just got to get it's, it. T- I would be on my own bubble already. I wouldn't even be going out. I'll be on. I'll probably be a different person if I play right now. Right. That's why probably players are, are, are probably 
the great players out right now, they know this. Oh, so they know they, what they're, they got to do. They're all siloed. The great players. They're all, they're, yeah. Uh huh. They know what they got to do, and then when they get out, some of them retire early because I'm not gonna feel them. Sometimes it's like, yo, I'm retiring. I, I, I Megatron. Like, I think what Megatron yeah. did is, mm-hmm. I mean, that's the it like, yo, I'm done. He seen Detroit wasn't going to do the right things to get him players and to yeah. really try to win a Super Bowl. Right. And so he was like, shit, my body. I got the bread. I'm out. I'm gonna smoke it, weed. Yeah. And, and that he, needs to be the goal. Like. If you right. get your bread, bro, you only need 10 million, 10, 10 yeah. million. Yeah. 15 and that's million. The thing that, yeah. And that's the thing. Most of them, and that's another thing, too. I think that when they get to that mentality, and when I got to that mentality myself, it was like I didn't know what real money was, right? Right. You're right. You get to that you 10 no mil. Idea. I think when players get to that level, the one great ones, they get to that level and they know they got to play for more. So then they say, okay, good. I got the money. I'm set. Now I got to chase greatness, right? right? Because that's what I would have to do, too. You chasing Hall of Fame. You chasing. Yeah. Uh-huh. Because, like, if you got to find that more base, because I know we're being out there and getting a little bit of comfortable. Just like, okay, I got money. Oh, I'm yeah. squad. Let's go. You and can't that's be I got comfortable fucking, in the league. You that's when I got up. fucking hurt, bro. That's right. when I got hurt. Oh, yeah. Oh, you see yeah. what I'm saying? I just was like kind of lazy on the rock. You know what I mean? But, and yeah, I hyped like, you up for that though. Like, right? Mm-hmm. The ego. I mean, like all the guys, everybody get mad at Antonio Brown, but it's like, yo, yeah. he is the best receiver in the league, bro. Like, mm-hmm. he unstoppable. And they paid him. What do you expect? Like, yeah, exactly. Of course, he's going to show out. Like, yeah. And then, you know what? And then we do turn around. But then to me, you got players like, you know, I'm a Buff- I'm Bills fan. You know, I'm Bills. history. I'm Bills all day. Buffalo is what it is. And Stephon Diggs, right? You could tell he on that militant shit. Like, he was training, and you could see him out there. And then while watching him play, I respect because you can tell he's keeping his body. Like, he's not taking too many hits. He, he, yeah, he can get down. Mark. And, and when you – and when I remember being in that area – now, but we want to, when I played, there was a player that did that. And I'm like, he's smart. Why, Marvin Harrison. Yeah. Longevity, right? Longevity was a thing. I knew like, as he a safety, it. my longevity was not there if I was going to be a hitter. If you, exactly. If you're going to come downhill, especially in that time when we played, because a lot, what would it was seen now? You would have a little bit more longevity because yeah. of the fact now well, you can't I love, hit. I played cover too, but you can't hit nobody. <laughs> you can't hit nobody now. They have unnecessary rep. They have you know hitting a defenseless receiver. I'm like, what? I'm like, bro. I don't even watch. I remember. Football. I remember when I played. These hits were. That's what you were supposed to do. My dad was a thing that you got to punish them, dude. Like the, it was come like come across the middle. You come across the middle. They got to be looking around. Don't ever and do that's, it again. And, and, and that's what it was. And like. These, you still got guys like fast forward to now, like Jamal Adams. Like I see, he's a down here, here. Right. but he still is getting kind of like out of that lane because right. what they that they passing more now. Oh, yeah. They passing five. Well, 40, even as a, as a defender, you like well these guys got to be smart because as a defender, I got to exactly. play longer. Exactly, I got to play much longer. And I'm not gonna play long if I'm a revolving door. I'm always hurt. Exactly. Oh, I'm always and, in, and, and, and back in those days, again, without the canvas, there was just like you going hard, and you, you right. know, hitting every play, da, da, da. and so there was a lot more bang injuries happening. You know, things well, guys like aren't that. practicing as much these days either. And so exactly, that. yeah. I mean, you you putting on pads and shit. And I'm gonna look at the back of the day, oh five, oh six, oh seven, oh eight. You putting pads on in December, December, November right. game. You know what? Right. And now. And that's why I say now, now it's more the, the, I think they're starting to understand too with the, with the pandemic of how it was now they got to seek the bubble and not practice so much. I'm like, yo, y'all see how successful y'all still playing on Sunday. Right. I mean, now these, you these understand. Pros. Once you become a yeah. pro, why uh-huh. am I you, practicing? You, <laughs> you know, know, I understand a couple of footwork shit, your Tuesday, Wednesday. You know, but Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, bro, we should be here we be like, like working out, relaxing, and getting our bodies right for Sunday. Right. You know, getting that footwork shit is always good. I understand that and getting the walk through middle right. street. Yeah, middle, Stretching, a lot of middle. I mean, middle all reps right. all day. Yeah, middle reps all right. day. You know what I mean? But I should be out here getting ready. And I think they're starting to see that. Right. And especially you got Thursday night games. Well, but you I got, got I mean, you got too much money on the line too. Yeah. So, you know, I you got, can't have guys out there getting hurt. And that's mm-hmm. your money player. And he told you, like, yo, I need to rest. I told you. Yeah. I need to rest. <laughs> yeah. And that's exactly. 
you know, and and so I'm now I'm an D lineman bred too, right? So if you mm-hmm. the DN or offensive mm-hmm. lineman that bred and he get hurt, that's right. That's you, right. You I mean, I mean, down the drain. Yeah, it's, it's a lot. And, and all for and, practice. Yeah, and the money is more now, obviously, right? They got they got you know a better union than what we had. They got more money, more TV, better TV contracts. So there's a lot of money on the line. Social so they, media. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, social media. The social is, media is, game is different. Is there is way? Oh my goodness! Like I mean, I remember <laughs> the first thing I came up with and I played was MySpace, bro. Mm-hmm. You know, and then you had your own website. I, I like that, but now that's yeah. Fast forward to now. You, you can really brand yourself on a whole different level. You can even put out videos that you train it and, get, and these cats can see you. You know what I'm saying? So, All right. I mean, the, the barrier to entry now is is obsolete, really, because yeah. you know, I tell anybody, it's like even artists or athletes, you know, you upload a video on YouTube and it go viral and that could get you a scholarship. You know what I mean? Absolutely, you, yes. It's all about visuals. Yeah, the, recruit, the recruiting game. When I got was was all. I remember uh, word of mouth letters. You know, I remember my dad wasn't even on that. Like I remember right. there was one there was one program, but I wanted to talk to him like getting my numbers out there. He was like, "No, nah, I know what it is." And then later on, he he kind of apologized because it was like three years later. It was actually like a right just to get your face out there and then get some letters and then maybe somebody will give you a chance, right? That's but at the time, about. yeah, at the time I was I was. Yeah, at the time I was getting recruited a lot, a lot of schools. I remember it was like twenty schools from, that are all D two, D three. Okay, right. And the D three shit was like, well, I'm gonna go with D three. I might as well go to you know one one of the Buff State. They was we, we were there winning. You know we were they were pretty much going like a eleven and one every year, going to the playoffs, mm-hmm. number one team in Upstate. You know what I'm saying? Playing you know whatever. I'm like I might as well just you know stay here. Like right. they know. You know, and I'm local and I'm still in a city where I'm comfortable, but I'm away from home. You know what I'm saying? I'm still like I'm, I'm 30 minutes away. So it wasn't like, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So like all that, when you incorporate it to, to then now, fast forward to, yeah, now nationally known, I could have went to like Wyoming or some, D, you know, D1 school. Like, you know what I'm trying to say? And, you don't realize all these schools out here either. Like, Yeah, you, you know, all these schools out here that are our D1 or even a Mac school, Miami of Ohio. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Some schools right. like that. You know yeah. what I mean? Things, you know, uh, or even Youngstown State, they were, they, were, they were actually recruiting for basketball, which was like, okay. which is good too, right? So, yeah. you know, I had, I had made a decision of what I knew, what I was going to play. And what, what made I, you and choose I liked, football? You know, really, it was like, I knew I was going to be a bigger size football player as opposed to being a smaller basketball player. I'm six, six, five, six, six is not that big of a basketball right. player. And then my last senior year, my senior year, I only started realizing my game was right when I was on my own and watched and peeped this. I remember I started watching like N1 mixtapes. And I remember I started really working on my handle. So then like, it was really weird But my senior year. I remember I was like, I probably could have walked on D1 right. school. And I remember even you be, yeah, I remember UB, uh, Coach Witherspoon at UB D1 school. Mm-hmm. He had came to my games a couple of times because I, I was balling. Like I, right. I, was, I did. I, I played basketball. Mm-hmm. I'm still in the in Winslow South, like third in a lot of the records, like especially okay. block shots and shit. I'm still right. up there. And so he came. He saw me, and then but I'd already signed to Buff State. He actually later on like gave me a call later on. Okay, it was like. Oh, okay. You know, maybe I was thinking about you. You know, seriously, coming on out here to UB, you know, right? And playing basketball, right? But but maybe Chase football was like I started seeing I got more attention from football. I knew I loved, and then on top of that, I was in that football mode. I'm ball boying, right. but my my dad's a coach. And you in Buffalo? I'm in Buffalo, New York. Football. I'm spending yeah before the, before training camp. I'm spending another every since I was 13. I was always spending four weeks in training camp with the bills because i was a ball boy right? right so i was working and then i was able to like you know so i'm in there just i'm around football i remember my hands getting better yeah i remember my hands getting better and i didn't understand them like my mind because i was like catching all types of shit like when i was receiving i remember i forget forgetting that i was always around literally footballs like you know and i love football too but i was always around them i'm sitting there college, and i'm catching shit i'm catching everything yeah that, I'm catching up. That's how I'm getting those reps, right? Yeah. And so, um, and then now, fast forward to now, again, you got these kids. I mean, I heard these kids now, you know, parents build the at-home gym. They get the training. They got the, they got the automatic jug machines. They got the, you know, 
the, the latter is obviously at home, and, and these athletes are just unbelievable. Plus, the game's getting faster. Yeah. And I think that once the cannabis then gets involved, where CBD creams, obviously, for the youngins, and then, like, you want to get to the point where, obviously, they just do exactly what they did in the NBA, which say we're just not going to test for THC. Right. Um, especially in football. That's going to be that, interesting to see this season because you know some guys is about to be coming in lit. 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 <laughs> I know. they are, I mean, and the thing about it, too, is, like, you know, when Matt Barnes, they talked about it, they would smell it and da-da-da-da. Right. And I think that even with now the knowledge about cannabis, they're going to be able to smoke some good strains and then maybe be able to, you know, do specific things that are going to, they're not even going to look like they lit or smell like they lit, right, but they right. might have just smoked a half hour before they got on the court or right. on the field, like, you know, or whatever. Like, 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 that's why I got my vape. Mm -hmm, I vape. Right. I mean, yeah. You hit them things exactly. and I'd be good. And most people have yeah. no idea. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'd be Absolutely. good. And, I'd be and, you're in, and you're attentive. You're, 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 you're on point. Everything's good. And, you, and you, you're still explosive with but your you movements. And you, yeah. And so it's wild. It, though. And yeah, it is. It so is. so conditioned yeah. to not like trust it and believe it in a sense where it's like it should be natural, right? It's just mm -hmm. like, it's a plan. Mm -hmm. Just it's like we go out and admire our trees. Yes. Fall. We admire yeah. Christmas trees in Christmas time, right? <laughs> right, right. It, you it, should be admiring these nuts, man. Like, right, exactly. Like, that's, that's exactly get it. it. You know, we admire big bodies of water. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, so it's just like, for me, it's just simple stuff. But it's also like, you know, it's to have relationship and be able to have a platform to talk, man, and engage. Mm because it's like, it's so diverse, man. We have so many stories like yours that like, how do you make it, you know, from being a ball boy to have a family, be coaching to yeah, those stories yeah. need to be heard, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's, yeah, you know, yeah, I appreciate out. it, man. I appreciate it, like more than anything. Like I said, at the same time, like the, you know, these platforms that you have are, you know, like you said, so they're, they're pillars in the situation. Yeah. This is a pillar situation because the foundation and the knowledge has to get out and right. continue to get out just like this, you know, digitally getting out, having these talks and and spreading the awareness the correct way mm -hmm. because it was so wrong to have it done, you know, in a, in a, in a different way right. that, you know, with the wrong type of, uh, you know, knowledge on this situation, you're going to look at it differently and you're not going to be able to benefit. Right from it at all like you know what I mean and that's why I think that a lot of people now are trying to fight for it bad like like yeah, as people as need as it possible. now we got you better yeah it's not you're just good. athletes you got veterans you got kids. yes you got moms I mean I've had so many white moms reach out to me about CBD mm. in the last two to three years because I talk about weed so much on like my personal Facebook page because yeah. I, I was a coach at one of these white high schools and, you know, I'd yeah. be, you know, my wife's a news anchor. So I just be around whiteness all the time. Right. But <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, they, <laughs> they, you know, like they feel comfortable with me now. So they'll be like, Gerald, can you tell me more about CBD? You know, I'm like, yo, like you better go read your fucking book just like you do everything yeah. else. Yeah, exactly. Like, I'm not your guru now. Like, no, nah, yeah. I get locked up for shit like this. Like, right, right. Like, you right, don't go right, buy right. a pound, you know, and I'm scared mm -hmm. to go buy an eighth just to get, you know. Exactly. Um, but it's these, and I have those interactions a lot that I'm just like, yo, it's crazy because you know it's coming. Right, mm. they're gonna do mm. the high-end boutique luxury CBD brand. Right, that's going to cost you five hundred dollars. Then they're gonna put put the salon on top of it. They're gonna actually yeah. like that's where we need to be thinking. You know, that's mm -hmm. the kind of mm -hmm. shit. You know, we need to be. You know, how can we make brands and businesses and incorporate this in our daily lives, but also commercialize it in ways that we build capital off of it. You know what I mean? Because we got to start generating that generational wealth through, you know, multiple industries. Like it's not enough for us to just have a bunch of athletes that are successful, but then know nothing about agriculture, business, entrepreneurship, right. you know, just the very basic things, cooking, restaurant, you know, retail. 
Like mm-hmm. we need to be in all these spaces, but a lot of our strong men are in sports. Absolutely, absolutely. And and they're and that as I said, when they're in sports, they can't focus on that because it's impossible for them to. You know, some of them yeah, have investments in to, it. But then when you yeah. try to, they say no. Like you yeah. can't be like, smart. You can't be no. like yeah, because there's some that have like they invested in it. Like I don't think it's super, like I remember some players now I've heard that they had a small investments in yeah. specific well things, NFL but then, you can't yeah and in the NFL you can't like when the NBA there's a couple ones that did okay. NFL you can't I know Clay you know, Thompson maybe. do yeah and even like uh Gronkowski okay yeah God. Uh, but but then here's, here's the thing he was promoting it the year he was off and then came back he used to get signed and then he there's nothing about that anymore so my thing is the NFL just needs to do exactly what the NBA did, right? And then they need you know, to the complete NBA play, but but clearly yes, they don't pay exactly to what the and NBA because does. they because they're so because here's the thing they're so scared, and this is what I hate. Mm-hmm. It's it's the scaredness. Let's just say they did it the right way, right? right? What's the, the what's right the right way? way? What's the right way? Open it right up and let them promote it. Okay, right? Promote it like you got players like I got the CBD company, I got the CBD company, this this. this. Right. You know, having and I'm talking about the country opening it up too, right? right, right. Whereas right. instead of Budweiser sponsors, you got da 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 can you know what I mean? Whatever. Okay. And they and they and they they don't want then you got players literally gonna be on commercials, you know, promoting this shit the right way. Right. And then again, there you go. It becomes it becomes that much influential. Mm-hmm. So that's just the, that's just yeah, that's just the start of it. They trying to promote because then they got you get again. You got the and then on top of that, who owns these teams? Yeah, most of these people that own these NFL teams could give one fuck about cannabis or they football don't. for real or football for that matter, right? <laughs> so all their money coming that, from big business. Yeah, so on top of that, you know, really, let's. I mean, you got. I mean, this guy, guys, like I said, like Jerry Jones. You think Jerry Jones in Texas is going to want to his players to be promoting a cannabis company? No, sir. You know what I mean? That's just, that's just the basic level. So, um, you know, once we get to that level, and I'm, it's going to be interesting to see because Why now we sell the Why do you think more players don't talk like or speak up about hmm. or try to protect, you know, or, or they, figure out a way to, you know, uh, do they know politically how to do things like uh-uh. start a business <laughs> that you don't have to be aligned with, but you are funding that business. Yeah, yeah. I mean, th- there's ways where, like, I mean, come on. It's it's pretty easy to just say, okay, I'm gonna give this other for my cousin, you know, five hundred thousand dollars for Christmas. Right. And then like, he takes that five hundred thousand dollars. He takes that five hundred thousand dollars, and in two years, he's in an evolving cannabis company, and then you just, you know, you're receiving something like you know how you can go yes. around. Yeah, so that's why I think you just the, the players, you know, don't really say much. Especially NFL, ain't gonna say much. Right. Um, and but they should be able to. Right. They but the whole the to. whole marketing campaign of them being a successful athlete and having cannabis is the selling point. Absolutely. Yeah. So exactly. what is marketing? Why do we put athletes in Nike? Yeah. Exactly. Right. Exactly. And it shoes sells. And, 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 and it sells. I mean. So if. To the point where the one hand are like this and Nike, right? Nike, Nike, that to the point where people don't people people don't even get this to the point where I remember I played and if you wore Nike shoes and they endorsed you, they get they signed you to a contract. It was all cool, but on game day, you wasn't allowed to spat your shoes. Right, you can't cover the Nike yet. You can't cover the Nike. People thought it was funny like that. People don't get that. They were just like they wouldn't they find you or something like that. But they didn't want the night, and so it was just kind of funny. It was like yeah, I was like, yeah. "Why well, spat?" So I guess I got to wear a Reebok. Reebok can have that shit. Mm-hmm. So it was just like people don't get that shit, right? So there's a lot of and rules they, and regulations that yeah. come with making that money. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, you you flashy, you making money, but mm-hmm. you ain't really free. No, 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 not at like, all. Free, when we talk about freedom, yeah. Mm-hmm. Freedom of expression, freedom right. of being like because they, like they peep, not, like because like know? peep this right, 
now they have the situation where in the NFL they have the cleats where they spread the message and like you know specific charities. All right. right. Hey, your jersey. About- hey, not to cut you off, your jersey for sale on eBay. I heard that. Yeah. Like one ninety. It was like one ninety nine. Man, you gotta yeah, go man. get that joint, man. I'm gonna cop that joint. I'm gonna cop, cop it, man. Yeah, I saw that. Shit. I was like, yeah, I saw it like a couple weeks ago. I was like, yeah, I gotta go cop that shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, what the fuck is it doing out there? That's the, the authentic stitch joint. Man. Yeah, that's the real joint, man. The real stitch, like it's like body too tight and everything. Oh. Yeah. See, the thing is, like, we get rid of that stuff and we don't think about it, but nah, that's history, man. That's it's history. Real, that's yeah, kids. yeah, that's real that's history. Your grandkids, exactly. that's your Absolutely. that's. You know, because it's intrinsic value, right? Everybody's mm-hmm. like, "Well, yeah, it's up for one ninety nine, but you actually—that's your person, right? Like, yeah, yeah, that's it's what invaluable. I'm invaluable. Like, yeah, you earn that no shit, value right? on that. Yeah, like you can't. What? What? That's like a lot of a lot of hours put in, right? So you can't really put a price tag on the time, no. blood, sweat, tears, the shit that went into that you know what I mean no you can't it's just it's, it's, there is no price tag it's, it's no it, price tag nothing. man no, we give no, up a lot of that stuff you know out of state and it's like or they take it and it's just like yo like that's mine yo like, right <laughs> right you know, it, exactly you, you go exactly and so that's why yeah I definitely gotta cop that shit I gotta get it out there and, and maybe pretty much putting it in perspective because I had a couple of jerseys and I uh, like do moves lost and shit right. you know you, you lose them you granted. give them away yeah, it takes you for granted, shit. So, but like, if fast forward to what it was now, if people were ever to, because they like, you know, they allow you for cleats and for more fashionable shit right, on there, or whatever. Good. But yeah, but like, you know, if someone that was at that point were able to put like a cannabis company or a cannabis situation or, right. or a, a message cannabis about cannabis, cannabis right. yeah, could you imagine that shit? You know what I'm saying? I gotta get those like, like you know what I mean? So, well, the whole well, the whole thing is like, oh, we got kids. Right. Yeah. But we're promoting exactly. a violent sport. We're prom- we're promoting whoa, whoa, felonies. Whoa. How about this? On top of this, man, we got kids. All this bullshit. But guess what, bro? You got Budweiser. You got Labatt Blue. You got Miller Light. You Terrible got food. Kids. You got yeah. You got you got you got all these. Everybody drunk companies. in the stands. Drunk as hell, endorsing the fuck out of some damn alcohol, like. Not, I mean, I'm trying to always say like, yeah, come to the game, drink. I'm like, yeah. And it's funny how y'all just forget how like, if, if you got 8,000 fans coming to the game and you want most of them to be drinking, what the hell's going to happen when they go home? Yo. They're drinking before the game, they're drinking at the game. And then they drink, like, so you just put, <laughs> like, and you're wondering why people fight in the stands, going nuts and all that shit. And they don't care, like, bro. And it's they don't care, so, you want, so don't tell me, so don't tell me about campus, how you got kids. Because let's just say, Let's just say you got to the point where it's that legal where they even allowed you to smoke at the games. Right. Do you actually think that there'd be people going crazy and fighting? Matter of fact, they allowed you to smoke, they cut down on the liquor. So that's another industry that's fighting this mm-hmm. shit. They would cut down on the liquor because most people- You got some of the liquor it. companies trying to get in it. Try to get in it, yeah, you got the Budweiser. But I mean, again, you, they're, they're, look, bro, you're going, you're going to try, but we know, yeah. you know. They all, I mean, all of them going to fail, but a lot of them are going to exactly. fail. Because it's culturally, it's it's not It doesn't right. even mix, it doesn't even mix. You know what I mean? So I think that hopefully one day that we get to that point and, you know, it'd be, it'd be fun to see because it was like, it's evolving to a certain degree. I think that it takes, the, it takes, our generation to one again getting get into that um that political standpoint. Right. Again, and people gotta understand it's not just who you vote for fucking president, it's local. Right. It's local. Who you well vote politics for is happening president. every day. It's not yeah, just exactly. vote. You know, like okay. Yeah. Like, all right, Trump was in office. I know plenty of people that took pictures with Trump that may have not supported him, but mm. they were in a business position. Yeah. And mm-hmm. what Trump was doing helped set them up properly. Yeah, exactly. For a business move. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think that we that's are, what we're... We just have no idea what politics is. Mm-hmm. All the politicians are in bed with each other, right? Whether it's Republican Absolutely. or Democrat, they're the same people. Mm-hmm. As soon as they leave the stand, they go, ah, ha, 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 like, and they go eat with yeah. each other. Like, exactly. I grew up in Washington, D.C., mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I went to private school with all of these kids, like it's the yeah. same people. You know what right. I mean? They may mm-hmm. have one little difference, you know, one little stance, but at the end of the day, all these politicians are making a lot of money 
And then guess what? When you get out of politics, if you scratch that one business owner back, who you go with? Absolutely. For? Yeah. You got a job. You hear what I mean? Right. Like, and yeah. then you're doing political work. Yeah. Now you're saying, yeah. hey, let me cover you. I'll go help you pass a mm -hmm. bill. Or, but we have to literally be there and get involved. Like, I've been a part yeah. of like three or four different political campaigns just in the last like four or five years on a small scale doing like marketing. Um, but when you see it, it's like, yo, like we aren't there at all. You know? Yeah. But that's, yeah. that's where these decisions are being made. Whether exactly. you get to smoke weed, whether weed is legal, wherever your jurisdiction is, exactly. if you aren't speaking up in that city, uh, at the state house, at the city house, they not paying attention. They don't hear you. Right. You know, yeah, what I mean? like right. even all right, they murder somebody, and then we go protest at the state house on a Saturday. Nobody's there. Yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. Politicians work Monday through Friday, nine right. to five. Right. Mm -hmm. So you need to go to their house. Yeah, exactly. You need to go to their. If we're gonna protest, stop protesting at the state house. Yeah. Go to their communities, go to where mm -hmm. they're most comfortable, because at the end of the day, our cities are boarded up, but their communities are flourishing and moving perfectly fine. Yeah. Jimmy, mm -hmm. Sally and Sue are doing whatever they want to do. But the whole time, our worlds are like complete opposite. Yeah. And we're in damsel distress and they live in. And I'm like, yeah. this is real time. And I'm like. Mm -hmm we need to change our plan, you know, like how we attack, how we, or what we do or what, you know, because for me, I'm like, I've protested, right? I've seen some of them like, this ain't it. Yeah. But also yeah. I've played in front of a hundred thousand screaming white fans. Yeah. <laughs> where, where you're like, hmm. But then white people are like, well, we don't get it. You know, we're just gonna keep murdering y'all. And I'm like, this yeah. is not <laughs> I'm not gonna keep being your entertainment, right? I'm not gonna keep exactly. allowing this to happen. Exactly. Where we got black people like, oh, well, like even LeBron and him, I'm like, don't play. Mm -hmm. Don't play. Well, I mean, the Kaepernick thing is is a big situation too, because it was like, y'all really gonna let this happen. Y'all really gonna let allow this. And even now to this day, I remember I we watched, when I watched the, my, my, my Bills play last game. Um, How the Bills doing this year? What's, the, what's their no. record? Man, you know, it's nine and three. Ooh. And we got Pittsburgh Sunday night. And you know, Josh Allen's telling me, listen, man, we, we're not playing with none of y'all out here. Just let y'all know. The AFC I mean, this thing. If I do pick a team, I, I'm, a, I'm a Ravens fan. So if I okay, got a team, yeah. I'm Ravens, baby. Yeah, they, they're doing all right this year, too. But um, I was, watch, I was watching them, and uh, they talked about Kaepernick, and they did a little special thing on it. I'm like, it was like they were, you know, kind of bigging them up. Right. It was funny how things were where when he first started. Oh yeah. I mean, I remember even in Buffalo, this is the thing, don't get it twisted. Buffalo is also a racist town. You know All of these towns are racist though. That's what yeah. we, I think we like, what? the whole no. country is racist. I mean, he, 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 he kneels, yeah, he <laughs> kneels and they like screaming at this motherfucker. Like, right. get the fuck up, nigga, why are you like, right. yeah. Right. And then fast, and then like you are the forward. entertainment. How dare yes. you yeah. decide How you're gonna you're be political? Paid. Yeah, you're getting paid millions of dollars. How just shut up and play. Right. Right. Your life you isn't terrible. Yeah, you're not you don't go through that stuff. Yeah, you could. That's the fucked up part well, about you. Damn right. Espe and especially and especially especially for football players. People right. don't get that shit. Our face are covered the entire right. time. Nobody knows so, who you are. You nobody knows who the fuck you are. Yeah, especially if you're not a big player, if you're a receiver, a quarterback. Right. Or, small dude. Small back. safety, cornerback, DB, nickel, like, you know, even outside linebacker, even, or even a DN, maybe. You don't know, know how big you are. And if you're an old lineman, you might just be big as hell for no reason. Right. So <laughs> so they ain't seeing you, listen, unless you're one of the main players. So, you know, when he kneeled down and everything, and, and, and and everybody was just going hard. And now to fast forward to what the knowledge is, it just, to me, it's just like, it's still not there because like, again, if this happened on a level like George Floyd and it, and it happened during the season, let's say, it should be like, oh, that's what's up. All right, ain't nobody playing Sunday. Exactly. Y'all can get mad all you want to. Or or how about this? We gonna make, you want us to make a statement? 
we're gonna warm up, get out there, and everybody's gonna walk off the field. Y'all gonna pull all you want. We ain't coming back. That's what I want. I'm like, don't come out, you know. Yeah, and then if the fans and on top of that, and the culture of it was if the fans were like, Yeah, you know, not only that, we're not even gonna um we're not even gonna like come to the game. We're not gonna support this team no more. We're gonna stop doing this stuff, da da da. Watch how the owners all of a sudden shift that to because the, they're involved politically. They ain't just and get business wise. It, yeah, business wise. They ain't just get a oh, they ain't just buy a team because they got a hell of money. Everybody got billions, but dollars, but they were involved. Mm-hmm. Property owners, political owners, business owners, right. this, that, and the third. They got they get together like, all right, man, we got to, it takes that. It right. takes us also owning. Right. Right. So when people say like we gotta own a team, we got tough, we got these people who go, the, all these people who got money. Right. Yeah, you got money, but guess what? People don't get it. You still got to get it. You can get it. Say right now, for whatever reason, Bill Gates came to me and said, TJ Cottrell, I'm going to give you $5 billion. Right. Okay, cool. Now, he's got his goals that say, uh, buy, buy, you know, Pagula already had. So let's say I go in the bills, like, I got $3 billion. Right. What's up? Yeah, team got to be going to <laughs> He gonna he gonna be like, okay, what did you say it was up for sale? He gonna be like, all right, and then I gotta get approved by all of the yeah, owners, yeah. and they gonna be like, well, why should we let you in? And then they know how they need to do a background check of what you are about. Right. Yeah. You think that they're gonna allow you? But they're gonna they're gonna get another owner in there somehow, some way. They might even do some background stuff, and then he comes by and says, well, this owner is gonna is three point one. Mm-hmm. billion dollars and he was a more experienced owner mm-hmm. right so that's why it's a battle that people don't understand it's about money and it's also about the political aspect of the situation right. getting involved in that right but that's why the players you know it's like the players man we got to get the word out to these like this guy i mean even young kids i mean what schools you going to instead of going mm-hmm. to all these big schools go to HBCU because that's where the money starts to go. Absolutely. Right? Like, Absolutely. Um, because we don't, I mean, nobody really tells you that. Yeah, mm-hmm. you, you, yeah, you go into OSU or these big schools because it's Nike or because it's the big school. But a lot of those black schools lost out on that money, right? Mm-hmm. Because they didn't uh, invest in their sports. Mm-hmm. But now we're starting to see it where it's like, yo, like, you got one good basketball player going to HBCU. And, and it's going like, crazy. It's going off. It's yeah. jumping. You yeah, know, but it's going off. Economy, man. right? We don't understand. I, we haven't equated the uh, the power of sports entertainment and economy, right? Mm-hmm. Like Ohio State, there is no professional team here because mm-hmm. Ohio State's football team alone is worth a billion dollars. You know? Right. So not only is it entertainment, but it's a tourist attraction for the entire state and city. Absolutely. So the city is making money off of Ohio State being what it is mm-hmm. off of the football team. And then you don't have to pay the players. And then you got a new crop of players every year. And then you got crazy fanatic fans that are uneducated all over the little cities and towns in Columbus. And, you know, a little like as soon as you get five minutes outside, you in the country. You know, right, right, <laughs> so right. you got all these little small towns that these are the people that are the raging fans mm-hmm, the mm-hmm. whole time. That's money. That's economy. That's power. But then that money is not going back to these players communities Absolutely or in not. these players so, pockets. So mm-hmm. then literally a player is at that height and then you have to start over in life yeah, exactly. to make money to live to like when it's like, yo, you were. The kid that you went to school with that is just there for engineering is nowhere close to where you are as an athlete in that realm. Right. right. So me being a D1 athlete and a kid just being an engineer, we're not in the same level when I'm performing, I'm having interviews with ESPN, Mm -hmm. I'm getting critiqued by everybody and their mama, Yeah. I got my own life and I still got classes, Yeah. we filling up the stadium. Yeah. You know, yeah. we win in games. So the coach is getting contracts, extensions, Nike's mm-hmm. getting paid, media companies are making money because websites mm-hmm. are starting to sell ads. Absolutely. And we don't get paid. No, nothing. And, and, that, and that thing is just going continuously. Mm-hmm. Right now, it's just moving. And mm-hmm. it's like we haven't set up any systems, anything for like every individual player needs to have a business. They're right. a business, right? They're, They're an a business. Yeah, you know I mean? like the, like you literally, you literally should have 
I mean, especially when it comes to Ohio State. I mean, the literally, Bears, Ohio the, State's the, football program is worth a billion. The, I mean, the the memorabilia that is sold. You go out there and ball out, and now I got sixty thousand people buying your jersey. A T-shirt, at, a at, lanyard, or, yeah, at at you know between. 40, 50 to 250 dollars a pop. And you are meanwhile in your dorm room eating top ramen noodles on Thursday. Mm-hmm. That's how it got down. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, and then all of a sudden when an alumnus sees that, like any one of us that maybe been was in the league, they pull up to the squad and they see this dude like he balling out, but whatever, and they hit him with a handshake. Right. It's like, man, here go with whatever, you know what I'm saying? No wonder why there'd be there was, like there was corruption. No wonder why you know fast forwards, but if we know what the truth was, where some players were, yeah, yeah, man, I know some players that don't turn around, they ain't go to class at all. Right. You know what I'm saying? They just come out somewhere had a had three oh. I barely and, ever went to class. Yeah. Yeah. And like I like, keep it one hundred, but the thing is I knew the system because yeah, school is you get a syllabus, right? They tell you everything you need to know at the beginning of the semester. This is the class. This is when you need to turn in this homework assignment. This is when this project do. Unless they take an attendance, I don't need to be there. All I need to do is be there for projects to turn right. in, assignments for homework. Um, but if I'm not getting class participation points, I don't need to be there. I turn in my yeah. homework. I'm there yeah. for the tests. Because it's a it's a it's a game. You can't fail everybody. It's a system. Yeah, exactly. It's a system. So how do we make sure thousands of kids aren't failing, but they exactly. always make it through, right? Exactly. If everybody fails a test, what do they do? They curve the test. They curve the test exactly. So we do that for everything. You know what I mean? So yeah. I do like private school taught me. I had teachers helping me write papers. Right, right, right. So, but right, think right. about this. You think a CEO is writing his speeches? Or no. his thing, no. Yeah, exactly. You got somebody yeah. sitting there like, yo, type this up for me. Like, all right, yeah. I'm gonna talk it. You gonna type it, yeah. uh, edit it, and we gonna put it out. Yeah, the team effort. But mm-hmm. we don't teach teamwork in school. School is very individualized. Absolutely. If you if you peak, you cheating, and then you're yeah. demonized. And it's like, yo, like, I had all the nerds helping me in private school. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. I was like, yo, mm-hmm. y'all gonna help me. Mm-hmm. You know, but right. I was cool right. with him. I wasn't a jock. I wasn't like one of those yeah. dudes that was like, I'm going to just use my, I was like, nah, we're going to be homies. I know yeah. y'all a little weird. Y'all smart though. You know yeah. what I mean? Right. And, <laughs> right. You realize these are the guys that are going to go be the millionaires because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. their parents is investing in them. Like my school, you could pay like an extra three to four or 5,000 if your kid was like slow mm-hmm. and they've got extra time on their homework and projects and tests so it's like you know you still get the same degree from this prestigious private school but you received extra help you got more time Mm -hmm. but you're not seen as a slow kid you know but in our communities if you receive an extra time it's like oh he's slow he retarded he he's special yeah 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 you're like oh nah, the private school nah you need a little bit of help they gonna give you help all right literally they created a pro they created a class called algebra three like what mm. the fuck is algebra three mm. it's not real like but they created it for a group of us there was mm. a bunch of football basketball players some other kids from that program and it was like a hybrid mm. but that helped us get to that senior level class and it's just manipulation yeah you yeah, know, it's, it's, it's literally manipulation, but we are not in these positions where we're manipulating the system, yeah. we're manipulating, mm-hmm. we're controlling the strings, right? We right, 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 right. We determine like the um, the payout, right? What's happening? Absolutely. Um, yeah. And that's where you know, because like I'm saying, like I'm in a lot of positions where I'm with people, and I'm like, well, it's cool. Like I'm with some of the best white people, like the smartest yeah. ones. They're yeah, like. Nobody in my community moves like y'all move. Right. But right. y'all not professional athletes. Yeah. Y'all not entertainers. Like, yeah. y'all can just escape. Yeah. <laughs> y'all exactly. can just disappear. Right. Um, right. Y'all got multiple houses. Mm-hmm. Um, y'all use businesses in a different way, you know. Um, and so it's different things. Like, when, we, when it comes to cannabis, it's like, man, we need to be farmers yeah, again, right? You know, like we're afraid to be farmers because we are relating that to slavery. Yes. 
right. the difference between slavery though is country, you weren't getting like, paid. Yeah, like yeah, exactly. We we have those that's a hardworking and and like no money. It's free and, labor and, and free labor, right? Like like literally hot summer out, and I think that we were we were in an escape to get out of that. When in essence, we should have just got more land and got back to it. Now, they oh, well, we they, did get and, land, but our land yeah, we did exactly. Land. Exactly. And so now, again, with the awareness, now we got the black farmers literally getting back to it. But I think that we need to all get back to it 100% because that is literally the sustainable, you know, there's nothing like farm raised vegetables, farm raised everything, medicine, farm raised herbs, well, being sustainable, food, saving you, saving you so much money. I mean, even my knowledge of it increased where I started seeing how much it was for these, these great vegetables that you can plant once right. you do have a little bit of plot property. And it doesn't make right. sense for people to you start thinking about it and go to the grocery store all the time and buy all this shit where you really just plant it and be patient with it. And then right. these seed packs, these seed packs actually last you like 10 years. And they're like an investment of like a hundred dollars. Man, we you should gotta understand how many understand how I mean I'm talking about like multiple, and I even like it blew my mind when I first saw I said, I was like, okay, there's no way that I'm gonna not be out here on the ground to get property where I can grow my cannabis and grow, right. you know, uh, all types of fruits and vegetables that I need right. to sustain, you know, the medicine and the health that I have. And, and now I think, play, I mean, a lot of players are getting farms. I will say right. that. Like some, and even the rappers, you know, they, they're starting oh, yeah. getting farms. People are starting to, I mean, the information is get, disseminating. Yeah, um, and, yeah getting, going, and the awareness is spreading. And it's, right. it's, 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 it's refreshing, man, it's refreshing because I, we both came up in that era and seen what it was like fully on a scale of like where it was just kind of like hidden on the camera. And now, I think that they can't stop it. I think that what they're doing on a level, which is what they're doing, these, which is this white corporate situation where they can't stop it. So they're having these secret lineup situations where they're kind of probably putting their people in these top which positions before they allow it to say, okay, because if someone said, if they allowed us to say tomorrow, do it the right way, boom, then the awareness is always to the top and it would be a takeover by, you know, multiple, you know, people, but it would be especially for the blacks who, who this is part of our culture, right. we do it the right way. Right. It would say, it would, it would definitely, it could, it could save us in a, in a whole different matter. Right. They well, cause they're that. not even mixing, like here in Ohio, it's medical, right? So yeah. You can't be out smoking it. Like everything has to be private. Yeah. But you think about cannabis and culture, cannabis exactly. and music, cannabis and sports, cannabis yeah. and everything. It's like, well, mm. it becomes like, all right, we need a bar where we can smoke and eat. Yes, you know exactly. I mean? Like have yeah, a good meal. Exactly. Like, you need a lounge. You know what I'm saying? Like a lounge yeah. area. And that's and again, and there again. Thing. Like yeah. cannabis and is the, a community thing. Like it's not right. a right. Like just like you grow uh, you grow food and usually you harvest with people. Right. Like, exactly. You know, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, everybody it's smoking definitely. weed like in their house, like nobody smoking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean you wanna have I mean again, like, you know, where I'm at, you wanna have uh be able to have parties and uh, right. you know, we you know, again in Canada we, we there's there's you know, what part of, are you in Canada? What part of Canada? Yeah, I'm in I'm in London, Ontario. Okay. And so and my boys um, from college is out uh, in Canada right now. I forget what part. Yeah. Of it. Uh, my boy Issa. Yeah, he's Southwest. Dead, Southwest. Dead, he's dread, He's locked up too. Dread yeah, freedom man. Freedom up, man. Like, yes, yeah, so that's what I'm saying. Like, just keep it locked up all the time, all the time. Like, um, but no, how like, been, how long you been locked up? Because I see your man, uh, your Chargers picture. You got the baldy, man. What yeah, I was baldy up, man. I just got locked up for the past like four years, man. Like I was, yeah, but I was like I said, I, I couldn't imagine wearing locks at that time, right? Or even having hair like that because of the helmet, right? I was right. like, nah, man. You'd shit. have had a whole another layer of protection, though. Right? Whole other layer. Not, not, I didn't even think about that shit, right? So, <laughs> but um, yeah, man, fuck. <laughs> like being in London, Ontario, we have these you know, these cannabis events, right? And like, right. no, I mean, just in Ontario, not in London, but like. All through the GTA in Ontario, we were able to have when before even before legalization, you were able to have like you know specific little cannabis infused events that work. And now it's like if they really want to do it right, they should allow a lounge. They should right. allow you know markets that are like you know too specific. But then that's not that's un that's uncontrolled. Right. So, but who's running the programs? 
Exactly. The money, the people who are that's the thing. When it went legal here, the people who run the programs are the most corporate people you can ever imagine in your fucking life. That's why we got that don't even smoke. That don't even fucking smoke. Most of them they, do not they know smoke nothing about, about it. But again, they've been put no. in position because they were already there. Exactly. I mean, right? I remember one time. I remember one time doing some research, and even my boys were looking at getting the LP license, just license producer. Um, license right because some places like in ontario they have like specific areas where you can win the day they have a lottery of names right. if you had a storefront they give it to you the, you know whatever long story short we found out that there was a meeting and uh to get to this meeting to to get to these specific people the ticket was twenty five thousand dollars a ticket the application fee. It's all the applica- money game, man. Yeah, the pay application fee. Everything is pay to play. Yeah, exactly. The application fee was another five hundred grand, and that, and you may not even get approved. Right. So they can take that's that five hundred thousand dollars. It's just to get it. So then you can go take that five hundred thousand and go to your facility, and they'd be like, no, and it's not refundable. Yeah, yeah. So you might just right there, you might you lost half a mil. Just so, trying to play. Then right you right. gotta have you gotta think about it. Most people ain't putting up their own money, so you gotta have a group no. of people that have Absolutely. that money. That and usually that group of people says, Oh, I know somebody over mm-hmm. here that can mm-hmm. help us get us yeah. in the door. Cause I, I be with them. I I yeah. know. That's how Absolutely. the game go. Yeah. Period. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, like, exactly. But that, that's so that turns into money, that turns into yeah. jobs, that turns into economy, that turns into it's not right. just black and white in terms of football. Like, yeah, like, like no. no. It turns a- into Profit and cash flow and jobs and financial like, freedom, financial, financial freedom, freedom, you financial know I mean? freedom, like, and, and self sustained more and more, more importantly, self sustained community. I mean, for people that are able to grow indoor and outdoor, that's the thing about the cannabis plant. It's not hard to grow indoor, it's not hard to grow outdoor when you do it right. Right. It would be more, it would save lives, you know what I'm saying? Especially, I mean, even having you know young mothers able to grow with CBD and be able to give their. Their, their young children specific knowledge and give them freely cream. Got that moms taking CBD, yeah. helping them with their pain. Because mm-hmm. I mean, my wife, oh. we just we got two kids, and so I'm like, mm-hmm. man, and my wife afraid to do it. I'm like, if mm-hmm. you don't take some of this weed, yeah, exactly. You have to. You yeah. have to at this point. It's it's necessary. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, man. Like I said, I'd I mean, be in churches. Pray. You know, churches, yeah. right? You're gonna mm-hmm. have cannabis churches, right? Because at the mm-hmm. end of the day, mm-hmm. that we gotta, but that's a nonprofit. You could start, you might be able to start those now really as a nonprofit. Absolutely. And, and I think that once what will happen now with the, if and you did it immediately. Donations when you're giving out. Yeah, you, it was just like, if you did it immediately, the, the thing about Babylon is you did it immediately, now they're gonna hit you with some paperwork, right? Well, you're not allowed to smoke that product, whatever. But, if they did it the right way again, you should be able to freely have a cannabis church. You should have free, free cannabis meditation areas, free yeah. cannabis camps that they have in specific states, but they're still somewhat regulated, right? right? So, um, yeah, but I think that in due time, we'll get to that, man. So like I said, these platforms are, yeah, these platforms are perfect for it. You know what I'm saying? And we gotta keep it going and having, I can't say that having conversations like this, uh, you know, I was on, uh, you know, my live yesterday and I had a person from uh, Jamaica called I and I Genetics that hopped on. Dope. And he was like, a, he was one of the, like, top, like the top growers in the world who's from Jamaica. And it's just like, again, because of these things, yeah, just because it's small man. things, they're powerful. And like, and then it, it was this just- this last too, I mean, like this yeah. conversation, I recorded, I put it up on YouTube. Yeah, Now exactly. it's a course, man. Like people right. are able to, I mean, see this and watch this. Mm-hmm. and experience you know some of the things that we experience right our brain right playing sports at a high level we deal with a lot but a lot mm-hmm. of times it's not processed in a way that we're talking about it long form long form like, right it may, it may be in a documentary of the best guy yeah but what about there's 53 other guys on that roster there's exactly. a lot of guys that played division one sports mm-hmm. that were very good and didn't pan out for the league but what yep. happened yeah, exactly. You know, what's the story? What's the what's background the story, story behind that guy? What's what the choice that they now? make? Like, yeah, you know, exactly. Like, is he still successful now? Did he transition? Why mm-hmm. wasn't he able to transition? What yeah, was exactly. set up? You know, because a lot of those things still come back to our foundation of mm-hmm. 
community, you know, I'm successful because yeah, my parents are doing pretty well. So I'm inspired and motivated to always keep going. You know what I mean? I got good community. I got help. I got resources, but everybody doesn't have that. But you have guys that were superstar athletes that don't pan out. And then what happens? You know, Absolutely. they get into drugs. Yeah. They maybe were into just weed, but then it got even worse because they had an ailing back, mm -hmm. but they didn't have good health insurance because they didn't have a corporate job. Right. They just been hustling. Right. Yeah, all day. And they, they don't know that they don't have the tools. They don't have the knowledge also, or even a circle around them. Like it's all of those little circles. Yeah, all of those circles, Right? Like I know yeah. I come from a background where I've always had good insurance. I've always mm. had things to do. But when I think about, damn, I got teammates that I knew was coming from the gutter. Yeah, and yeah. They were dogs not eating yeah. after games again. Um, but yeah. now we're adults. Like now we are grown men and the university really ain't doing nothing to help us. Absolutely. You know, and then I'm here being a businessman and I could do a lot of different things as a businessman as opposed to if I was an NFL player. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Like yeah, I'm, all I'm, type shit I'm getting into where I'm like, yo, this nigga's in the league that's they can't. They can't, they can't even they can't comprehend even touch what's it. going on. Yeah, they can't exactly. touch it. Um, and so by the time they do figure it out, I'm already in a different space where I've been yeah. moving this way, but I've been able to do that because of my experience, right? And Absolutely. People I've been around. Um, but it's, it's that exposure of getting the stories out. Um, and I know a lot of us, we, we have ego. Um, but we also don't have the platform, you know, right. a lot of us right. aren't willing to do it ourselves. We don't know how to tell our own stories. Mm -hmm. uh, we're afraid to, um, we've all, we, we, we know we're judged, but it's like, Hey, you know, people can't really judge you once you, they know who you really are. Absolutely. Like, Absolutely. Once you, Oh, he's not just an athlete. This man is a creative, Yeah. You know, this man yeah. Is intellectual, he's educated. Yeah. Like you don't have to just have the degree from Harvard or Yale. Like, mm -hmm. to, nah, you know, nah. Just, like I said, it's, it's in your it's in your presentation, your conversation. Like I said, yeah. your conversation when people open up. Like I remember the whole, you know, when they find out you play, right? Then nobody just one of those you know, I play football, do do do, right? And then they don't understand. So then you you become quiet, and then like even when I'm around now, as soon as I speak. It, you are now you understand there's a whole different experience there's a whole different knowledge there's a whole different you know you know conversation you can tell you know there's a whole work experience because mm -hmm. i play a little bit but i also work my ass off in between those years that i didn't play and i've worked right. for banks i've worked for corporate i've worked mm -hmm. in the industry i've worked industrial i have management experience the security management experience I did, like you know what i'm saying I have a vegan uh, uh, you had a business that i helped start like all this shit. what you doing now like right right now it's like Really, right now, I love in life, man. And um, basically, starting the roster fire movement as far as the BSRC, and um, also you know working for an LP a licensed producer, also a private okay. company, so it, uh, called Sensi Brand. So it's been um, definitely a blessing to to have that situation, but mostly also focusing on you know the, the, obviously the BSRC, um, which is a, basically a grow community movement and a coalition. Buffalo okay. Soldier Rastafari Coalition. Oh, and um, it's basically me and yeah, me and basically my indigenous partners up here just really creating programs to run, get like these platforms out the cannabis, right knowledge about it. Right. And also uh, make sure that, you know, there's also a um, extortion going on of the plant mm -hmm. and how the money is also going on. So, you know, I'm having to make sure that I'm, the Margro is going to be you know, one of the best grows and, and also a good situation to be affordable for the people. Right. Um, and then also it's going to be just this, the whole good movement with that. But um, me working, working for this LP you know, up here in Ontario, they would just really focus on that and then obviously do the music, which is also I got, you know, Coltrizi has got uh, the Selassie Soldier album coming out. I've been doing music for a long that's time. Music and that's the thing it. about, yeah, that's the thing about you know, not playing. It wasn't like I was thinking, oh, I'm rapping when I'm playing. Blah, blah, blah. I know I, I've been, my music was in my, my mom was in the choir. I've been in the choir. I knew I was going to put the music and out. And now they get mad at the guys that's playing and rapping. Exactly, dude, which is crazy to me because it's like they should be able to express um, who you are in that town. And, and, and they don't get the point that like, 
it's all entertainment but then they try to take they try to what well, the crazy thing is they try yeah. to take everything serious like first of all it's yeah. entertainment. it's entertainment it's entertainment it's an art it's, it's, it's yeah it's an art form it's an art it's an art it's form telling like, this man he can't rap and have yeah like, like i guess hey. i guess i guess would have been cool i guess it would have been cool since it's art he should go paint right, right. like or some shit. like think about that right and to me they don't understand that like they don't understand it. that keeps you from getting in trouble is having a good art form to release. Like a lot of cats that we play with, you know how it go, they just had a little small studio to cut and it was talented as hell, so rapping and shit, but they couldn't put out nothing because they're playing football and you, know, you can't be talking and saying that shit about. So then, you know what I mean? Now that I'm obviously not in, the, in my own independent lane, I can put out, you know, music I want to put out and talk about cannabis and talk about, you know, things I'm talking about political and- Right, you know, that's the, the thing um, about music. It allows you to put yeah. things out there in a yeah, way, exactly. like in, in a different vein. And just like this, our conversation, but rap and music is a different mm -hmm. channel that allows, you know, that's why I appreciate a lot of these rappers too that put good things in their music, you know, because mm -hmm. that message does get out there. You know yeah, I mean? exactly, so exactly. And and you know what, you know, we, we can continue to have these platforms and, and like these things are gonna grow mm -hmm. on a major level. You know, like this, this thing's gonna explode. These conversations are gonna, people are gonna watch these, they're gonna smoke and watch these things and, and right. understand and get it. And it's important to continue to have it. It's important even to me, to, for us to continue, even when we don't wanna, you know, we're kind of tired a little bit as far as like maybe our own independent program, but like you gotta continue because you you don't know who's watching. Right. Those three or four people that, that got that good knowledge from you, those seeds, just like we are in cannabis, right. you know, those seeds multiply legitimately. Right. Into, into into major things and years down the line. That's the thing about cannabis. That's why they're still scared to fuck with it. One, you get a plant, you get one good mother that can multiply into 50, 100, 200, you know what I'm saying? Oh yeah. And it continues to just, you don't need, you don't need them with right. this thing. They right. know that. Right. You, you don't need it at all, you know? Well, you do it the, the right way. Has, the fact that the government has a patent. Yes. Works. Yeah, you know I mean? like, it's like, you know, so um, these 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 uh, conversations, um, you know, first of all, like I said, thank you for like, again, you know, let me, you know, on this platform. And, and yeah, so we're gonna have great. you again. This is just the first time. Yeah, you know, exactly, gonna, man. Listen, I'm, anytime, I'm trying to find like, guys too that, you know, we can have consistent dialogue, whether yeah. it's uh, uh, current topics, whatever's happening, where we can absolutely. Just, yeah, you know, it's Absolutely. like sports, right? It's just like exactly. sports commentary, ESPN. We got to have this where we get, this is what's happening now. How can mm -hmm. we, what are we doing? What are you doing in, in oh. Canada? What's happening in Canada? What can we do? Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, we, we can you're, you're 100, yeah, we can have that 100%. Like I said, you're right, because we we need it more consistent. It can't just be like once every in the blue moon. Yeah, we have these one-offs. We, one -off. we, we got to keep. Yeah, we got to have these things, you know, current for and especially. It, like you're about rare, company. right? You're a unicorn, right? You uh, yeah, are, you're that, an anomaly. Yeah. Um, yeah, appreciate I know that. I'm an anomaly, right? Because yeah, I have yeah. two parents, you know, I have successful college educated parents. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I had the experience of, you know, college and private school and NFL. So you have these different experiences. So yeah. what I realize is a lot of times if I'm not sharing information, mm -hmm. Nobody in my circle is receiving any. It's receiving it, yeah. Nobody really knows. Anything nourishing, right? Yeah. We, we, it's all man. Is there talk about it? We'll yeah. know. Because, we'll know the music. We'll know. Yeah. We'll know the athlete who's doing X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. We'll know the fashion brand. Yeah. But we're not getting this message or mm -hmm. the, the depth of the conversation right. behind the scenes of what these NFL players are really dealing with, what they contracts yeah. really like. Why do we see them and then they disappear, but then nobody cares about them? Nobody like, cares about them anymore. Like we right. just discard them. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's and then some of them, and, and to keep it to keep it a hundred, some of them left and then started their own like because right. they wanted to get involved in the cannabis. Right. They probably could have paid play. I'm sorry, five more years. You know, seven more years. Yeah. Like you know, I got I just stacked up 15 mil. I'm getting the fuck out of here, bro. Oh, yeah. Like I'm good. Like I'm good. I'm gonna go this. I'm gonna put. I'm gonna put two million to this good business. I know it's gonna be straight. Like right. I, I cannot. Now I'm a free I'm a man. work. I'm still healthy. I'm a, I, yeah, I'm still healthy as fuck. I'm a free man. I can smoke as much as I want. So I'm gonna move to us. I'm gonna move to uh, whatever legal state. Buy you know what I'm trying beer. to say? Yeah. <laughs> and, and 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 you know what? That seems like I know. I know some players that that are now probably like 
waiting for that. Like they good. Like right now they probably chasing greatness, but right. one day, a couple more injuries may be away. Right. Maybe I'd be like, yo, I'm good, bro. Right. I got family. I got 20 million. I guess I just signed this deal. I got this. And people don't understand. It's not just the NFL contract. They got some endorsement deals. They got some, they yeah, got some companies now. And they got some companies now that are, are somewhat cannabis friendly on the back end. So they can still have like Nike is kind of still cannabis somewhere. People don't get that. It's kind of camp. They don't say yet no. They don't say yes. No. So they got some people. They who are mm-hmm. Yeah, they, they got some people that will still be indoors, be able to like you can they're not gonna make mad if you got a Nike emblem, you smoke weed and you promote right. that. You know what I mean? If you don't I know play. I know some of them um like uh like snowboarders and yeah yo, absolutely they all have like cbd brand but you they be branded up like yeah all right? over they, and they smart. still have a nike you know but yeah yeah so, be a bunch of white boys right they do exactly they, they exactly work. and nobody sees that and if it was us they gonna see that well right? again we don't that. again those guys don't the thing mm-hmm. is they're individual entities absolutely so absolutely. sean white is a business yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Sean White is making the decisions. Oh, Nike, Absolutely. you don't want to be on Sean White? Well, that's right. fine. We will go with Adidas. Exactly. Exactly. We're yeah. not, we not losing no sleep, no nothing. Right. Mm-hmm. And we're going to get Sprint. We're going to get this. We're going to get <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, we're going to yeah, get yeah. So some NASCAR, money. Thing. NASCAR. Yeah. Same mm-hmm. thing. Those are individual entities. Right, right. The thing right. about football is we are owned we are the yeah. players we are one of the 53 you know what I'm saying? One yeah. 53, guess what oh you need we got a replacement for you we got somebody and, and it busts it down you. yeah and then they bust it down people don't get it like you're 53 and then you're 11 on 11 so now you're 22 on the field so and then you get and, then, and out of that one or two or three that make a play here and there that score a touchdown probably you right. know because you know where you are you know as a safety you, you might be doing some shit but you might make two tackles but right. you was playing your ass off. Right. You all the way on the other coverage. side. <laughs> yeah, you doing coverage. You locking down that whole side. They don't know that they can't pass the ball over there because you're doing your thing. Right. So little things, and then you leave the game and you go to the store and nobody is saying, yo, great game, because they don't even, you know, the owners might know. And you're not and getting that endorsement money. And then you ain't getting that endorsement money, so they play on to that and pay you cheap, even though you're you not might, getting you know, pictures. A, you ain't you getting the saying? celebrations. So, yeah. So again, it's 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 good that we have these conversations, get this and get this get this knowledge out, you know, so yeah, people sure. can understand the back end of this, man. And I mean, like I said, we're I, deeper, I man. We're 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 much more dynamic. Yeah, you know, mm-hmm. uh, and that's because that's what's being sold is that we can only do we one trick ponies. But what I realized, we just got to create platforms. We have to, and a lot of times mm-hmm. as athletes, I realize that there is a niche where there's that a- there's that superstar athlete, but then there's like the D1, D1, D2, D3 uh, guy yeah. that played UFL, AFL, Canadian football. Right. Oh, you know, like we're all athletes at the end of the day. Yeah. You know, but these yeah. stories are the ones that don't make it because it's not the flashy exactly you know exactly. It's not the heat of the moment yeah yeah but, yeah you know we're building longevity we're building mm-hmm. like oh this is a two-hour conversation three-hour conversation mm-hmm. and somebody's gonna be able to watch this play it back and be like yo these and then go and look up you look you up yeah yeah and see the stories and see it you know, you know and see you and the same thing to you and like it's, it's gonna be it's gonna be great man so like that's I said, why it's, that's it's, what my whole idea behind it. You my yeah. first guy that I really kind of uh, reached out to on this. Uh-huh. I've just been super busy, but uh, yeah, no. I want to do it more for sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. Like I said, it's, I remember when I first saw it, I was like, yes. <laughs> I'm like, what if, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It makes sense. Like, right. <laughs> cause I was, it was almost like I wanted to do it. Cause I'm like, I'm waiting right. for somebody. I'm like, and then you get that, you know how you get that light, like, well, yeah. you know, and your voice is like, well, if you're waiting for somebody, maybe you do it yourself. Right. Do it yourself. <laughs> and then, yeah. And so when I saw it, I said, yes. And then now, of course, the, the post and the knowledge and it's like, yeah, he knows what he's talking about. The yeah. of it. And you, again, yeah, we can continue to have these conversations over. We can connect. I'm going to, you go use my platform for you also. Yeah. You if you got you it, you send it over. I'll yeah, so I'm saying, it. yeah, same thing with you, vice versa, man. Like, yeah. And again, it's, it's perfect. It, it's legitimately to my same right now, bro. It's perfect. We can connect. We have these Zoom conversations. Have a couple more people on here that are that okay. are talking we'll about panels. this. And then, well, I'm, I'm gonna get yeah. an athlete panel where we'll have. Yeah, I got, I got, I got a guy with me too. 
I call him Worldwide U, which is one of the, you know, one of the black like ambassadors for black cannabis, oh, like black okay. cannabis growers. Yeah, yeah. He's, I mean, he's my, he's my, he's my big, one of my big homies. Like, yeah, okay. like he's a person that he's in the left, right hand of everything from South Africa up. And the fact that I can call him right, right. now or what's that, he put over up King and have a, I mean, he just do get paid to compensate for a guy. One of them dudes right. like, you pay him for the conversation. Right. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. And he would love, he would love this platform. He would love nothing more to talk about what we need to, I mean, it'd be perfect. This guy was right next to Al Harrington. Al Harrington actually learned from this cat. Okay. Like, Al Harrington talked about him on um, the Breakfast Club when they had, okay. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like that. Right. And yeah. um, the connection, and he, right he had, yeah, connections. So we gonna have, we gonna definitely build this right on levels. And I think that you know this is perfect timing, also. So I, like I said, man, let me know and anything. I'm right there. You know what I'm saying? Let me know. Real talk, bro. That all day, that. I appreciate yeah. you, bro. I'm gonna definitely yeah, put this up probably on YouTube. Uh, okay. And I shoot it out to you, and then you know we'll. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Here. Yeah, exactly. Put it up, and I even put it up on my. You shoot it out, and then I go. I have a channel too. I put it up on my channel also. You know what I'm saying? Right, cool. And then I put it on whatever and get the word. I got a lot of players and a lot of people that will love to see this. It was, it was, a, it was a great thing, great conversation. I look up at the clock. I was like, yo, yo, we were talking for two and a half, almost two and a half hours, and I know for a fact that if I, we could talk. You know, about oh, we this. can keep going. We can keep, we going. keep going. Yeah, we we go go for the, like whatever, but you know. But now that's so, what I mean. I kind of wanted to be just free. Kind of, we just go. Yeah, it was perfect. It was perfect, man. Kind of get like, a background. Had... You know who who yeah. we are, like who you are, like um, you know, because I think that's important too. The story, you know, who you who mm -hmm. are you? Like, how do you I think? Yeah, I appreciate that. I thank you very much. Like I said, it was you know great to and refreshing to get it out you know and talk about it on a platform too right it's kind of yeah good. it is yeah it's exactly kind of <laughs> yeah like like straight up i mean like i said we got so many subjects right. to talk about i mean even i talk we're gonna about talk about the now. music next time i want to talk about, i want to hear the music. yeah we talk about the music next time and then we can even talk about with the athletes again i mean i don't know if you read about like like psilocybin I think i've been hearing about it yeah i, I think no that more. yeah i think that there's a small knowledge that's going to get out there it's going to allow people to say yeah, dog. I think that on a small dosage scale, right? Instead well, of I mean, us taking so many people are dealing with depression, yeah, the anxiety, and that's the thing. Yeah, and and and, and when we you talk need about to the unlock, app. you know, I, I mean, when you think about the brain and you think about the human mm. body, it's it's regenerative, regenerative. Yes, yeah, naturally. But naturally. if you are having something that's stopping you, God has put everything on this planet for yeah. us to heal. Yeah. In a sense. And, and I remember that, and I remember like one of the biggest things is that the repair as far as athletes is being on a top pinnacle and right. then boom, it's all over overnight. People don't get, that is PTSD too. You just, you are just sitting there with a hundred thousand people, you know, all of a sudden you walk down the street right. and nobody, Girls and like everybody. You, you're everybody. not in the club, like people don't get, you're not walking in the club first no more. You ain't getting, like all this is, you, you, you the has it. For free no more, you don't get Yeah, it. so you just in the crib, up. like, and I think that when like, like me, I've, I've, I've got like right now, I have the distance, like it's perfect. I go to a point where you need that energy where even like you have those and you even talk more you relax you get it out you and then the next day the thing about it is this the research the next day it's almost like you recharge something yeah in your head and i think that in football they're going to understand it athletes especially they're going to understand that that is like almost something where maybe you know during a time of training when you reset and you come back monday mm -hmm. ready to go I don't think I don't, I, mean, I don't think about something like during a game and not at all like that. It's not a game thing. I think yeah. it's more a again a recovery situation recovery, where you yeah. might have a forty eight hour time, right? And you might have a horrible game. The like Bills, right listen, the, uh, the Bills just lost. They lost the nine and nine free right, but we should be ten and two because DeAndre Hopkins caught a hell goddamn Mary. Okay, <laughs> and I remember like you know what it is like. You you just had that point and. You lost, right? With something freak like, and you go home, and you and what do you do? You pick up the damn bottle because you can't smoke, mm -hmm. right? And then maybe even there's players that maybe like maybe got hurt right. bad, right. and they made me maybe a, a some small, you know, micro dose of psilocybin the next day to kind of just get into a floaty air and it gets you to that because it gets you to that right mind of like you know what this is what right. I'm gonna focus on I can get this right right. So we can talk about that, man. Okay. We can talk about so many things.
Yeah. And on this, this platform. This is, this is an educational platform. You know yeah. I mean? So we, entertainment, yeah. education, we want to learn it all. We want to get it from the source. Man, I can't wait, man. I can't wait. I love it, man. I cannot wait. And like I said, it's, it's, it's I will always you know, be. We get, we get the pro guys. I got some other guys that want to talk. You know, that's the thing. Once I started it, dudes was reaching out to me like, yo, I want to yeah. talk. Yeah, because they want to get it out. Yeah, the real want to get it out. And we should. We we are allowed to. You Uh know what I mean? Absolutely. That's the thing. We haven't. We haven't had anybody create a platform that we've had that freedom to right express ourselves. I feel like right. Um, and so that's what I've realized. I'm like, yo, there's no space for us really. So you just got to kind of create it, and this digital space will allow us yeah. to do that. I mean, even even like Stephen Judge and Stack Five, like he 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 remember he was like saying that shit. He was like, kept he getting kept pounding it. He was right. I'm like, yo, you so right. He's like, yo, we need to create our own platform. That's it. We are the create our own platform. He's like, what's wrong with you creating your own platform? Do exactly what you do. Athletes and cannabis. Boom, locked down the website. Not about gives awareness out. This takes nothing, bro. Nothing, this takes. Uh, I have a, I have a nice tripod with the light. We have a combo yeah. smoke. Boom, getting the knowledge out. Right. There was oh. no big production back we here. Just, we you know just what I'm met. We just met, and now we know what it is. Now we're building something that's going to be. Yeah. I'm telling yeah. you, this is going to be serious. We're going to oh, yeah. be like, we're going right. to remember this. We're going to remember this. We're going to be like, yo, remember this first one. First one. And then, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? First and then one. when the, the things open up, the borders open up and shit. So don't worry, man. We're going to get it popping, man. Yes, so, sir. Well, all right, man, I'm gonna let it, you man. off here, man. I yeah, man, I appreciate it. Oh, yeah, I appreciate it, though. Anytime, let me know, man. Yep, love, right, man. peace. Let's love it. Yeah, we go.